from Three River Stadium, it's the Cleveland Browns versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Brought to you by Budweiser. Beach with age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By IBM. And by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, phone your nearest BMW dealer. Ready to go, Coach Marty Schottenheimer, the American Conference Coach of the Year a season ago, looking for his third divisional title in his third season as head coach of the Browns. Ready to match up against one of the stalwarts of the game, Chuck Noll, in his 35th year in the National Football League, his 19th season as the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you know his success record unparalleled when it comes to Super Bowl rings, his teams have won four. But today, a rare occurrence, they are an underdog on their home field against their biggest rivals in the National Football League, the Cleveland Browns. They're still looking for one more for the thumb. It'll be a long shot. The Steelers need a win today and help tomorrow to get in as a wild card. The Browns will win the divisional title with a victory today. Mark Malone, the quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers, under the gun here in Pittsburgh. He's not thrown a touchdown pass in four straight games. It's cold but very good football rather in Pittsburgh. 32 degrees, chance of rain, but it's been dry so far all day. Bernie Kosar in his third year and already right at the top of the quarterback rankings with Joe Montana. This kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beer. Steelers will get it as Lee Johnson bangs it downfield for the Cleveland Browns. Dwight Stone runs it back for Pittsburgh and the Browns, a good special teams unit. And he's down to cover nicely, and the knockdown is made at the 20-yard line. 15-yard return. Steelers' strength on offense running the ball. Abercrombie and Pollard, the big backs behind Malone. Starworth and Ouija Thompson start as the wideouts. Danzel Lee, a relative unknown at tight end. But he's effective as a blocker. Has caught only 12 balls. The offensive line is outstanding. They run the slant inside running game at Pittsburgh. Trap blocking, feet around Mike Webster. One of the great centers in the history of this league. The wideouts come to the near side. First down and ten Steelers. Into the run they go and straight up the middle is Frank Pollard as he breaks it for a first down across the 30. And he's after the 33-yard line, a gain of about 12 on the play. Trap blocking in evidence right there, Trump. As we look at the Browns on defense, Pizzuli is starting at defensive end today. Golick, a Pro Bowl nose tackle. Hairston's had a terrific year. On Cleveland changes already to the Bear defense. You see the insertion of more defensive line. Well, you see already they've got that big bunch up there in front. This is the number one rushing defense in the AFC. And it shut down the Steeler running game when they met the second week of the season. Cleveland winning that day at Cleveland Stadium, 34 to 10. Pollard again, and again the trap blocks, and again Frank Pollard bangs right at the Cleveland Browns. Takes the ball, close to the 45-yard line. This time he gains 11, two carries, and 24 yards on the running game for Pollard so far. The one thing that Pittsburgh will do until you stop it is hammering that ball at the line of scrimmage. They're a little delay. Pollard, one of the real power backs you find in the NFL, been hurt this season, but with he and Jackson in there, Excellent power football. Abercrombie, one of the setbacks, along with Ernest Jackson. Now back to Pollard on a draw play, but there's nothing there as the Browns go to the power run again. And this time, Cleveland's linebackers shoot the gap, and there's a knockdown on the play. We'll watch the defense shoot in, make the hit. Watch the nose tackle right up there on the line of scrimmage, doing as best he possibly can. Golick. Along with Sims, a former Pittsburgh Steeler first-round draft choice, probably gets a great deal of delight making that tackle, released by Pittsburgh, picked up by Cleveland, and in fact, has played very well. And now Jackson, out Pollard, and Abercrombie, the runners for the Steelers, on a second down and 12 play. Malone takes a look. He's in trouble. Despite surgical knees, he's got good running ability, and he bails out as he gets to midfield. Malone takes a hard wrap. The fans come alive on that, but he gains seven yards. Dave Grayson hitting right at the out-of-bounds marker. Malone is up. He looks a little wobbly, but that was very, very close to being a late hit, but no flag thrown. Sims 99 again on the pressure, and Cleveland comes with a bare defense. They run a lot of games up front. 
Malone, a very gifted athlete with good foot speed, watched the very end of this play. And when you slide down, you're supposed to be protected. I'm surprised there wasn't a flag there. That there should have been a flag there. When you go down feet first, you're giving yourself up. You're supposed to be protected from the tackle. And Malone runs the ball effectively. Now Rodney Carter comes in the game, number 44. He's winged that to the right side. It's third down and five for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Opening drive and there's no score. Abercrombie. First down, Pittsburgh as he drives on a slant run to the 42-yard line of the Cleveland Browns. Webster at center, Wilfley and Long the guards, and they're blowing off the down lineman for the Cleveland Browns. Before anything else, the offensive line of the Pittsburgh Steelers really dictates what kind of day the Steelers are going to have. If they have the ability to find those slots, get the traps up in there, then the Pittsburgh Steelers are as good a team offensively as you can find in the NFL. When they must rely on the pass, then suddenly they become vulnerable. Every time they've gone to the straight ahead run, at least three out of four times, they've had first down carries. Two by Pollard to open the game. And the underdog Steelers on their home field moving the ball, and now Malone sees something he doesn't like. A penalty marker comes in. It's a delay of game. He didn't like it when he saw the 30-second clock had run out. Delay, quarterback number 16, five-yard penalty, still first down. To the shock of many people, when you look at Mark Malone, who is constantly booed here in Pittsburgh, the most revered quarterback in the history of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Terry Bradshaw, and total numbers comparing first four seasons to first four seasons, Malone is the better quarterback. Touchdowns, interceptions, completion percentage, and yards all favor Mark Malone. He can't buy a compliment in this stadium. Well, he ranks last among the passers, so it's tough to get one when you hold that low position. And right now, he's going to roll it out, looking deep at Ouija Thompson. Malone tucks it down and takes the slide again. He's hit late, and again, there's no flag. You and can... the Steeler coaches are in sense. Yes. Noel is on the field. Uh, Chuck Nolan and his coaching staff are correct. When a quarterback goes in there for the hook slide, he's supposed to be protected. At the point where he goes down, that's where the ball is marked, and you're supposed to try to avoid that hit. That's twice now that Watch the Cleveland trunk. Browns have hammered him. Eddie Johnson gets him with a forearm. Now, this is the one factor in the Pittsburgh offense that can really help the Steelers today. There's Eddie Johnson, 51, elbow right to the head. I think that's two flags that should have been thrown. Neither was. Then are thrown, and now it's second down and nine coming up for the Steelers on this opening drive. Alone checking the pass rush. It comes on a stump. He gets time. He's got a man open. John Stallworth loses the ball, but the Steelers recover at the 31-yard line of Cleveland. It'll be a Pittsburgh first down. Albeit a very nervous one. Abercrombie flopped on the free ball after it was freed from the receiver, John Stallworth. That's a big key for Pittsburgh to get Stallworth in the game. The last time these two teams met, Stall had just one catch. Actually, Hanford Dixon, 29, one of the starting cornerbacks in the Pro Bowl. It looked like zone coverage. Cleveland playing off a little bit. Lucky bounce, and Pittsburgh maintains possession. Changing defensive players in the chess game each play. Now first and ten for the Steelers. Again, the slant run. This time Cleveland fills nicely. Lucius Sanford, an outside linebacker. The Browns picked up uh, off the waiver wire. He was cut by the Buffalo Bills after a nine-year career there. Key to running the football, handling that nose tackle. You can see Mike Webster and Terry Long, 74, getting Golick out of there. Now, Golick doesn't give much ground. And actually, he's, in fact, doing his job. If it takes a center and a guard to block the nose tackle, the nose tackle's doing his job. At the time, he was taken out, but the game was good for only two yards. Second down and eight. A quick out goes to Walter Abercrombie. He loses the ball. It's three on the field. Cleveland might have it. We'll see if they got it before it went out of bounds. Can't tell. Now, they're saying he was out of bounds. No control. The ball has bounced twice now for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Again on the sideline, even though there's a fumble, if, if the defensive team cannot gain control of the football. Second down. There was no possession on the recovery. 
It will be the third down, Pittsburgh's ball. Boy, Abercrombie does a great job. Just knocked that ball away from Frank Minifield, 31, and it's enough that he can't really hang on to it, and it bounces out of, ground, out of bounds. Very, very lucky. But when the ball starts bouncing your way early in the game, boy, you feel good about it, and Chuck Knoll's got to feel good about it. One of the problems you know Trump the Steelers have had is getting the ball down close then coming away with no points. They had it inside the Houston 10 yard line four times last Sunday and got only one touchdown. As he calls the cadence he surveys the defense now Malone stands in and drills one to Lewis Lips coming up the right flank for a gain of seven yards on a third down and 11 play he gets down to the 25 yard line. Lips has played very little this season, does not have a touchdown for Pittsburgh. And in the previous meeting between the two teams, Lips had five catches for 68 yards. He would be a big guy to get in this offense, and he is Mr. Field Goal Accuracy. It's only his 10th catch of the year. He's been a Pro Bowl player, was as a rookie when he was the NFL Rookie of the Year. Gary Anderson, one of the best now, running this by a 42-yarder. It is blocked. Ball on the field, and the Cleveland Browns will take over the football, stopping the Pittsburgh drive. It'll be Cleveland first and 10 at their 33. On to this point, Daryl Sims is playing like a man possessed. He got the penetration, and then Baker gets his hands up in the air. Watch Sims. 99 right over the center, just caves in the center, and then Baker gets his hand up. So far, the former first-round pick of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Sims certainly letting his presence known here in Three River Stadium. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. people who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours the very best of everything this holiday season. These days, to have information bouncing off a satellite is not exactly front page news. But when it's headlines and pictures, all scores and stock prices, that is news. And it's all going from a Contel satellite to nationwide printing plants. On time, every time. If you have news to get out, Contel can help you, too. For Contel, I'm Chuck Nester. There are those who fervently believe that true perfection is found in the details. At the Bavarian Motor Works, we gave that belief a name. We call it the BMW 735i. Beautiful, to be sure. Yet perhaps the most beautiful thing about it is its spirit. Watch the penetration of the Cleveland Browns defensive line. Daryl Sims, he gets through there, and then Bubba Baker gets his hand up. That's the first block of the field goal block of the season against Gary Anderson. That's a six-minute, 37-second 37, 37 drive for no points. Jury of a defensive end scorned in Pittsburgh sends a number one here and was waved outright. He's going to throw, Don. Osar takes a drop on first and ten, swings it out. With the ball is Kevin Mack. He's across the 40, and the Browns on their first play from scrimmage get a 13-yard gain and a first down. Delton Hall, a rookie cornerback, made the stop for the Steelers. The Cleveland offense, highest scoring in the American Conference with Bernie Kosar at quarterback. Biner, the leading receiver with 49 catches. Mack, the leading rusher in the backfield. The deep threat is Webster Slaughter. He's got seven touchdown receptions this year. No score. First quarter, 7.47 to play in it. Brown switch into an open backfield with Brian Brennan near to left. He's in now to run from scrimmage. As the pitch back goes to Kevin Mack. Running into the Steeler linebackers, he's ahead on a first down carry for only a yard or two. Got to about the 46-yard line. Greg Carr, a linebacker from Auburn, made the stop along with the veteran nose tackle, Gary Dunn. Willis, Dunn, and Gary, the starters up front in the front three. 
Merriweather, the outside backer, was voted the Steelers' most valuable player by his teammates. He's been a pro bowler the last three years. Two rookies start in the secondary, and both are very good. Delton Hall and Thomas Everett. Donnie Shell has 51 career interceptions at strong safety. Going blitz. Now they back it off. It's a second and nine play coming up for Tosa on the ground. Oh, and a catch. Ozzie Newsom. He's ahead for a gain of eight. And that'll bring up third down and about one as the Browns cross midfield. And one of the things that I think that Bernie Kosar does is tip when he's going to throw. In order to get out from that court, that center a little quicker, you'll see that right foot is back. Now it's back all the time, but when he's going to throw, he can't sit back just a little bit more. And getting that the pass reception to Ozzie Newsom keeps his streak alive. Now 127 straight games. And the tight end is a very difficult guy to uh, get the pass to against Pittsburgh. They do the probably the best job in the NFL of holding the tight end up at the line of scrimmage. Okay, this is a run. This is a run. I set. Pitch back goes. Ernest Finer tries to turn the near side. Look at that Steelers speed on defense. Coming up was Thomas Everett. The rookie free safety makes a cut down tackle at about the 45 yard line. But on third and one, the game was good for two. It was good for a Cleveland first down. Biner with 49 receptions this year. Two years ago, Biner and Mack were 1,000 yard rushers each, but played only seven quarters together in the 86 season. Both were hurt most of the time. They've been in there all the way this year, and that's made a big difference. The Browns balance the run and pass as well as any team in the league. They do it 50% of the time, each one. Let's see if he's going to throw or if they're going to run. This is a throw. This is a throw. I set in the backfield. Throw it is looking deep as Kosar. Now he dumps it off over the middle to Ernest Biner with head down. He takes on linebacker Robin Cole and a nine yard gain results. Trump, you're like a guy up in the press box out in center field stealing base signals. Well, you can see that foot is sitting back there, and Bernie Kosar is not the quickest guy afoot. But when he's got that foot back there, I think that's what he's trying to push off of, and you can see that foot. Even though with the play fake, he's trying to just hustle his way away from the center as best he possibly can. Langhorn goes wide to the right, the possession receiver, and also a deep threat. Webster slaughters on the left flank. It's a throw again, Don. Looks right like foot is back. Second down and one. It's a throw on a quick play as Kosar whips it downfield. Coming back at the ball is Webster Slaughter. He's got it inside the 20-yard line. That's a Cleveland Brown first down. I thought they crossed you up there, Trump, but he came back with a trick play, resulting in a 17-yard game. Delton Hall, the man in coverage. You can see Thomas Everett kind of faking the blitz there. And all way, way off, and Slaughter just cuts it underneath. This is a well-designed play most of the times when you give it to the running back, and then he gives it back to the quarterback. You go for the distance, but there's that foot again. Now, I don't know if you can read that defensively. But it is very obvious. I don't know if it helps if you can because he spots every open man on the That's field. True. Nobody surveys a defense like Bernie Kosar. This looks like a run. And up goes and Mack on a straight ahead dive on a first down carry. Gets the ball close to the 13 yard line. David Little the number one tackler for the Steelers knocked him down but it was a five yard gain for Cleveland. And we'll let the foot go for a while and people out there television land when uh, they see the foot back see if they can pick up the pass see if our key is correct and frankly I'm not sure that Pittsburgh can do anything about it when they see that foot back because Bernie Kosar has so many different people to throw it to and spreads it around the field every game 355 to go in the first quarter the Browns challenging in this scoreless game lone setback is Kevin Mack angle throw over the middle but the ball is off the hands of Webster Slaughter the guy who does a lot of tucking but backs it up. Kosar had six on that pass. It was right where it had to be, except in the fact it was not caught. And should have been caught. Slaughter does not have to jump or change the way he's running at all. Just get his hands up there, and it kind of slides through a little bit. Maybe a little bit short. Kind of back into his body a little bit, but you got to catch that pass. This is the NFL. I think you're supposed to get those. Third down and five. Cleveland Browns. Seems to be some confusion. Audible. No, just an audible, Don. 
Heiner checking with the quarterback. Heining Cat into the corner of the end zone and defending it nicely is the rookie Delton Hall as they try to go again to Webster Slaughter. So the Steelers at least stop what looked like a touchdown drive by Cleveland and now the field goal unit of the Cleveland Browns comes out. One of the things the Cleveland Browns try to do is a lot of audibles at the line of, line of scrimmage. They believe that Marty Schottenheimer believes that Bernie Kosar can handle them and handle them all. And they run as many as 25 26 percent audibles at the line of scrimmage in any given game. 31 yard attempt by Matt Barr who you remember picked for a Super Bowl championship team here in Pittsburgh. All is on the way and he's got plenty behind it and the first points are up and the favorite Browns with three minutes and 37 seconds to play in the first quarter drive down the field and go up three nothing on the Barr field goal. No one would deny that the Japanese are aficionados of fine machinery. So when they reach that station in life when they can afford really fine machinery, guess what they buy? A car from Germany called the BMW 325i, making BMW last year's number one selling luxury import in Japan. As long as I know it, Tom, I need help. He's there. Sure, I'm glad to see you. Stay with you. Figured you wouldn't mind. And when the last craze rounded up, you head for the mountains. Bush. And the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Sure are you one. How about this in here? Head for the mountains of Bush beer. New from Black and Decker. The air station. It has all the pressure you need to inflate anything fast. The Black and Decker air station. Always at your service. Can't breathe. Can't sleep. Ugh. Before and after. Relief so you can sleep. What Afrin does in five minutes takes Sudafed over an hour. It's the number one recommended nasal spray. Sunday on our house when Molly faces a lonely Christmas. Don't you ever get mad about Daddy dying? Gus renews her holiday spirit. Merry Christmas, Grandpa. Cloud formations on this December day in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Rain is a threat right now. Temperature in the low 30s. As the Cleveland Browns on their first possession had the ball almost five minutes taking it downfield and... With Matt Barr kicking a 31-yard field goal, they've taken a 3-0 lead. They have a different man to kick off, Lee Johnson, who kicked for a national championship team at Brigham Young. And here from the Houston Oilers. Bangs the ball downfield. It's going to go three yards deep, and wisely, Whitestone is, does not bring it out, so it'll come out on a touchback to the 20-yard line. And there the Steelers will go on offense first and ten. The Browns have beaten the Steelers the last three times they played in four of the last five. But over the years, Pittsburgh has dominated. One of travel's greatest challenges is how to keep wrinkles out of clothes packed in the luggage you've checked. But now, thanks to Samsonite's hard side luggage, it's easy. Because our special features keep your clothes in place and you looking great. Samsonite hard side luggage has put the suit back in the suitcase. So you'll never make the wrong kind of impression. Proving once again that our strengths are legendary. In 1979, 27 men in Munich began a project that became a quest that became a car. Spare nothing, they were told but build the finest, most spirited luxury sedan in the world. That car has now arrived in America, and it's called the BMW 750iL. A lot of folks drive off on vacation without knowing what to do or who to turn to if they run into trouble far from home. I'm State Farm Agent Steve Rhodes, and my policyholders know that almost anywhere they travel, they'll find a State Farm agent nearby, ready to help them get back on the road. It's part of the good neighbor service we're so proud of. For auto, home, life, or health insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The best
best and brightest of the bowls are on NBC as the Pac-10 champion USC Trojans make their record 25th appearance to take on All-American Lorenzo White and the Big Ten champion Michigan State Spartans. It's the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. On New Year's Day, college football's best and brightest are on NBC. Coming to Pittsburgh is coming home for Marty Schattenheimer. He was an All-American linebacker here at the University of Pittsburgh. A name like this makes everybody's blood run hot. He was back with the Steelers briefly in 71. Chuck Knoll told me he might be a better coach than a linebacker and cut him. But he's been tremendous at Cleveland, taking over from assistance role, now an established and coach of the year figure. And up goes to Pollard, and the Browns going to slap that right back. First and 10 carry, and he lost a yard. Same play that gained him 23 on the first two plays of the game. That time Dave Pizzuli, former Pitt Panther, right there to make the tackle. He's starting for Sims, but they run at the tight end, and there's Matthews and Pizzuli standing right there. Good block by Danzel Lee. 84 gets Pizzuli on the ground. Pizzuli gets up and makes the tackle for a gain of about a yard. Malone takes a look at that 46 defense the Cleveland Browns have implemented this year. And up goes to Pollard. Blockers are there. He cuts back in and breaks two tackles. And Pollard somehow in a second and nine play gets ahead out to the 27 yard line. Again on the play of about seven yards. That was truly the old Statue of Liberty play. And Malone puts this ball up like he's going to throw it. You see the linebackers drop ever so slightly. 51 at the top of the screen drops. And a good adjustment by the Cleveland Browns there. Anthony Griggs along with Felix Wright to make the tackle, but it's a seven-yard pickup, third down. Be interesting to see if Pittsburgh choice, Pittsburgh's choice in this third down and short. Run or throw? Looks like they're going to throw, Don. 2-11 to go, first quarter, 3 nothing Cleveland. They say a pilot, he runs all the time like he's mad at somebody. Goes right at the tacklers. This time it's Abercrombie. He's going to have a problem from behind. As they're running down. Pazuli playing a big game. Getting a starting call today. And also on the stop was Lucius Sanford. A loss of three yards on the play. The Pittsburgh offense is booed as it comes off the field. Three downs and out. And Harry Newsom comes down to punt the ball for the Steelers. The Browns have one of the great ones back to return it. And Gerald McNeil. Ran one back here last year. A kickoff. 100 yards. He'll be going to the Pro Bowl as a kick returner, Gerald McNeil. Newsom having a good year, and he gets to work a lot. 61st punt of the season, not that deep. Can McNeil take this on the run? He cannot. Takes a bounce back towards the Steelers, and they quickly down the bottom of the 47-yard line. Woodard came down to cover it. And so, with 1.15 to go in the first quarter, and the Browns still in the lead, 3-0, Cleveland set to go on offense when we return. To those who, with a boundless energy and burning spirit, live to be the best, comes a salute from those of us who live by the same values, the U.S. Armed Forces. I'd go to college. Me yeah. too. If I had the money. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to college on the new GI Bill. You serve full-time in the armed forces or part-time in the reserves, and you earn a lot of money for tuition. The U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. I got it! Great ideas don't always arrive between 9 and 5, so IBM is introducing... The boss will love this. ...the smallest, lowest price personal system, too. Distribution, of course. Why didn't you think of that? With the power and advanced graphics to help you take care of business... That was inspired. Anytime. Uh-huh. Right. I'll sleep on it. The newest member of the IBM Personal System 2 family at your IBM authorized dealer. Green Bay, Wisconsin, 20 below. The last place you'd want to be with a cold, unless you're the Green Bay Packer backers. So we asked them to try Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. Got rid of my aches and pains. Try it up my runny nose. And Alka-Seltzer Plus, that's all I ever needed. Eight of every ten Packer backers who tried it switched to Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. Fast, effective relief for tough winter colds. Try new Alka-Seltzer Plus nighttime cold medicine to relieve your cold at night. The best and brightest of the bowls are on NBC as the number one Oklahoma Sooners take on the only team to have beaten them in three seasons, the number two Miami Hurricanes, a battle of undefeateds for the national championship at the Orange Bowl. On New Year's Day, college football's best and brightest are on NBC. 
Dave. Bob Trumpy, this is Don Cricky at Free River Stadium in Pittsburgh, where the Steelers trail the Browns three to nothing, as you see, overall series, but 16 of 17 since the Steelers became dominant in the National Football League in the 70s. They've owned the Browns here at Three Rivers. One in 16, the Cleveland team here since Three Rivers open. That win last year. Kosar likes to challenge deep. He's liable to go long distance anytime. On this play, he goes to Ernest Diner as the Browns get good blocking from the right side. Cody Risen, a Pro Bowl tackle on the right side, led the block. Seven yard gain on the play. Believe it or not, Bernie Kosar would be a rookie in the National Football League this year had he not graduated early from Miami of Florida. I think you could tell from his foot that that was going to be a run. One thing that Cleveland must do is identify what Pittsburgh is going to do all day. Are they going to blitz him? And they're going to lay back in coverage. You see by his foot. It looks like a run. No, he's reaching it back there. Maybe a pass. Second down and about three out of the eye set. Osar checking the whole defensive program of the Browns and goes to Biner. Both arms on the ball. He fights through that first wall. Breaks the crust and he's down to the 40-yard line. A six-yard gain for Cleveland and a first down as Robin Cole made the stop. Now that time Bernie Kosar's foot was back but they ran the ball but let's just document that is from eye formation with the foot back they run let's not lose the key on Bernie Kosar yet as the first period is just about to end let me see if we're on the same page now but they're in an eye formation his foot's back they're going to run it looks like it but if it's an open back they're going to pass uh, or one back it looks like they're going to throw could even flip a coin that's the end of the first quarter and the Cleveland Browns on the 31 yard field goal by Matt Barr on their opening possession have taken a three nothing lead. Why is this man breathing like he left us cold at someone else's house? Taking the time to read a book instead of reaching for a tissue. Relaxing in his favorite chair with muscles that no longer ache. Laughing instead of coughing. Resting instead of suffering. Why? Because he took NyQuil. Nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you can rest medicine. Now a new cherry flavor, too. GM meets your challenge now. If you ask me to dish up my hard-earned money on a new car, then you better show me some real quality that's... Uh, Priced right. Uh, GM meets your challenge with outstanding quality and great value. It's backed by the strongest warranty in GM history. What about price? Most popular GM cars and trucks equipped the way you want are priced lower in 1988. And right now you can more than double your savings on option packages on some of our best-selling cars. That's leadership. That's GM. Back at Free River Stadium, 3-0, the Cleveland Browns are in the lead, and one of the problems falling behind Cleveland Trump is the fact that the Browns have given up the fewest points in the NFL this season. Yeah, the other point is, too, for Pittsburgh, they are not a good come-from-behind team. They need to get ahead, stay ahead, so that they can run the ball. That's what they do best. But to this point, it's been a rather clean and played game. We're going to keep checking that foot of Bernie Kosar, though. Yeah, I, even though it's been written about, even though it's been talked about, I do believe that there are times when you can pick up when Bernie Kosar is going to throw. Now, it may not help you in third down and long, but what if it's out there first play of a drive, first down and ten? It may give some indication as to what exactly you're going to do. You never know. And it, it doesn't take much more than that for a defensive coordinator to try to uh, pick up on a little thing like that, build a defense around it. The first quarter numbers as they break down. Pretty darn even. Yards, pretty even. Yep. No turnovers. One thing to remember about Kosar, even though he's only in his third year, now the foot's back, so he might be humming it. First, First and ten. ten. Nobody reads a defense this early in his career like Kosar. He checks out everybody, and he kills the blitz. As since his collegiate Brennan. days, sidearm throw right through the coverage, and he makes the connection. Out to the 30-yard line to Ozzie Newsom. And it's good for 10 yards and a first down. And I tell you, he had two receivers open. Brian Hinkle finally makes the tackle on Newsom, but Brian Brennan was wide open through the zone. Now, it does appear that Pittsburgh is dropping back in coverage. Good pass protection up front. Newsom is getting off the line of scrimmage, number 82. No one's really holding him up. And Bernie, the longer the game goes on, the more sidearm he gets. There you see Brennan at the top of the screen. He was wide open down the middle. They measure for a first down. They tried to get Bernie to throw back more on top. 
And they found out that his delivery was a little slower as the Browns get the first down. So they said, you throw it any way you want. And he'll get to a point in the game where he looks like Dan Quisenberry throwing it out there. Underneath arms instead of over arms. And the amazing thing is he'll he'll look off a defense. He'll be looking at somebody to the last second, then he'll side arm it to the other side of the field. He quarterback the national championship team at Miami of Florida when he was a redshirt freshman. Started in the NFL when he was 20 years old. First down and 10 for Cleveland. The Steelers run. could be in trouble if they fall down 10 nothing early because they don't have the passing game to come back. Here's a throw and a wide open man down inside the 10 yard line. The connection is made to Reggie Langhorn. Good for a 23 yard gain as again Kosar finds the open man in the Steelers zone and fires a tight spiral right on his numbers. And one of the things the Browns were able to do get to the line of scrimmage early. And then let Bernie Kosar read that defense. Now Langhorn really doesn't run a pattern as much as he goes to an area. And Kosar with that great touch able to throw it right over the linebacker for a completion. First and goal Cleveland. Langhorn Trump limps off the field but now the Browns are challenging for what might be the first touchdown of this game. Look at him look. Look at him look. Something in the Steeler defense did not please Bernie Kosar, so he takes one of his three timeouts. The better not to lose this golden opportunity. First and goal at the seven-yard line with 13.34 to play in the first half. Listen to the heartbeat. And you'll hear how to save up to $1,475 on a new celebrity. Chevy has made it possible for your dealer to pass along savings of up to $775 on air-conditioned celebrities, plus $700 savings on option packages. That adds up to a $1,475 savings, or save $350 to $1,200 on a specially equipped new Beretta, Cavalier, or Corsica, or get $600 cash back on a new 88 Camaro. That's the day, Chevrolet! Whether it's a simple office phone or a large, custom-tailored telecommunications system. Whether it's voice only, or voice and data. Digital switching. Transmission equipment. Tie lines. Watts lines. Multiple long-distance hookups. There's one company that can do it all. No, GTE. wanted a Bud Light. Bud Light! If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Now go get pizza. Bud Light. <laughs> because everything else is just a little. Today's game is brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by GTE. G, no, GTE. Coach Knowles Steelers are backed up. First and goal for the Cleveland Browns who lead the game 3 to nothing. 13-34 to play in the first half. Cleveland coming off a standout performance against the Raiders and they broke an eight-game losing streak on the west coast of the LA Raiders. Now looking to go up 10-0. Crowd makes it tough on Kosar calling signals to the run they go and Mack is stuck. Coming up the middle on a blitz was linebacker Greg Carr. And he made the head-on hit for a loss of two yards. And a little pushing and shoving, but these two teams have played each other a lot, and that generally happens. One thing that the Pittsburgh Steelers like to do down here is get as many people up to the line of scrimmage as they possibly can and fill those gaps. Great car and Thomas Everett. Watch great car. He's right back of the center. Nobody touches him. There to make the tackle on Kevin Mack for a loss of two. As the designated blitzer and the Steeler linebackers will be blitzing at least one of them every down in this close. Audible again, Don. Audible. Second and goal on the nine-yard line. Three wideouts in the game for the Browns.
Caught by Newsom, breaks a tackle, and Ozzie Newsom steps out of bounds at the one yard line. Kosar pump faked a great move inside. Defense swung towards the slant runner, and Ozzie Newsom then took the ball on the outside and got down to the one yard line where it'll be third down and goal. Great job by Thomas Everett, the free safety. Everett coming from inside to knock Newsom out of bounds. He tried to run a little pick, but it looked like. And the man coverage there by Pittsburgh on the goal line. That's a nice tackle. Just gets him out before Newsom can get in. Third and goal at the two. Now it gets real tough as the Steelers with extra down linemen jump into that goal line defense. Kevin Mack, the eye back. Tim Manoa, the blocker in front. Fake throw. And with the ball is Derek Tennell, a first-year tight end from UCLA. And the Cleveland Browns score again, and they now take a 9 to nothing lead on a two-yard touchdown throw. Kosar setting it up, play faking to the running back, and then looping the ball to Tennell, who is a product of the replacement team during the strike. Impressed everybody, and now he's the backup to Newsom and plays a lot. That's an excellent play fake, too, by Bernie Kosar. It holds the linebacker at the line of scrimmage. Watch Manoa and Matt and a fire up in there. Really a nice little lob job there to Tunnell. Six points and already the Steelers are now in trouble. They don't play well from behind. That was the 22nd touchdown pass this season by Bernie Kosar. He had only eight interceptions at block extra point. Woodson, Rod Woodson, the number one back choice out of Purdue with the Steelers, who reported 95 days late in a contract holdout, but he's starting to come on. Makes an important play, perhaps, as this game wears on. From the outside. Looks like the ball takes a while to get down, and Woodson is right there to block it. As the Browns extend their lead to nine to nothing. We're not a company, but we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge. We'll give you opportunities to learn, to develop, to perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career, a career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company, we're your country. We're the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Who says Chevy's better than Ford? USAC tested standard half-tons with their best automatics and half-ton payloads. Zero to 60, 40 to 55, pylon course handling, full-size Chevy beat Ford. Level and uphill towing acceleration. Chevy with Vortec V6 beat Ford. Which truck should you be driving? USAC test just answered it. Now, get $500 cash back on new full-size CK pickups. It's today's Chevy truck. Like to pause the truck, please. Jeffrey Houdre has never heard of Unisys. All the way from France. It's from my grandfather. Have a seat. But Unisys systems process half of the checks in the U.S. each day. 30 of the world's 50 largest banks rely on Unisys for everything from international bank transfer to quick customer service. Jeffrey just knows that a new 10-speed bike is almost his. Unisys and banking, the power of two. Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Bengals battle the Oilers. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL Live. Look at this. The Pittsburgh Steelers block that extra point with only 10 men up there on the line of scrimmage. And Rod Woodson, with his great foot speed, able to get around the corner. Knock that field goal out. That extra point out. Lee Johnson kicks off again. White Stone takes it back across the 10 yard line. Out to the 24, and that's where the Steelers, as they start swinging after the play, will go on offense for a third time in the game. Steelers were three downs and out on offense. We remember the last time they had the ball. It looks like Malone's going to. One of the criticisms of him is his inability to throw the deep ball, let alone connect on it. But he's going to have to start soon because they had hit some big plays. Cleveland, as we pointed out, has given up the fewest points in the NFL and is the highest scoring team in the American Conference. So you need points to beat the Browns. They don't give up many. When Pittsburgh must throw the football to get back in a football game, that's when Mark Malone seems to be at his worst. Not good. No touchdown passes from Malone in the last four games. Ernest Jackson's in the backfield now. 
Look out. John Starworth has it, and he's ahead for a gain of about eight yards. Got to about the 33 yard line. Gain of 10. Almost. Brown's got their offensive line assembled on the sideline. That's Howard Mudd, the offensive line coach. Mike Babb, the center. It looks like Pittsburgh's given them a little bit different look defensively. A lot of this game nowadays, Don, in the NFL, adjustments that happen on the sideline and at halftime. Cleveland very good at it. They surely are. And Fadi, a very innovative offensive coordinator. He's added a lot to the Cleveland offense since he's been in here. Bang, bang. Offensive line fires out. Big back goes behind it, but there's not much there for Jackson as he runs into Pro Bowl nose tackle Bob Golick. Golick plays off the ball about a yard, but watch what happens here. He reads that movement by Mike Webster, and Golick is right there to, to get in Ernest Jackson's way. Doesn't really tackle him as much as he just kind of bumps him down. Golick, one of the best. He's going to the Pro, Pro Bowl for the third year when he first played nose tackle. The first game after it, he said, you get all the respect of a fire hydrant at a dog show. Two people blocking on him on every play, and now there'll be two on him. Is it third down and one for the Steelers? And they break it. Right up the middle goes Ernest Jackson, and he's across the 45-yard line. Out to the 47. On third and one, the Steelers got a big gainer. Good for 13 yards. Cleveland puts Pizzuli at the nose tackle when it's short yardage. He's the man right over Webster and watch Webster. Turns Pizzuli right out of the way and there is no one back of the line of scrimmage. You see Anthony Griggs 53. He's playing the inside linebacker replacing the Browns leading tackler Mike Johnson out with a knee injury. So the Steelers have gotten their biggest gains with the run. Malone has yet to hit a deep ball or even try one. Looking deep now, he's letting it go. A hard throw to Ouija Thompson inside the 35-yard line. That time, along with a hard strike right on the numbers, and Ouija Thompson coming off the right flank is ahead for a gain on the play of 23 yards. That's six, six and a half versus five, nine. Thompson does a great job of disguising when the ball is thrown. Frank Minifield was the man in coverage as his back turned to the ball. Never sees it. Ball underthrown just enough so that Thompson can come back and catch it. Nice pickup. Steelers drive stays alive. Along with a quarterback rating coming into this game less than half what Bernie Corsars is. Abercrombie, nothing there as he tried to take on the left side of the Cleveland defense and Clay Matthews, who's headed for the Pro Bowl. Seven Cleveland Browns are, was there to make the stop. Matthews and Ray Ellis, great support. That, that bear defense or eagle defense as some call it you see the double pull there of the guards Wolfley and Long but good pursuit right at the line of scrimmage they went to that bear defense when Mike Junkin got hurt when they traded Chip Banks and institute this becomes the best defense in the AFC against the run the first week they put it in was that first meeting with Pittsburgh in September here's the throw over the middle is it caught? It's going to be close. We'll see what the officials rule. And they say it's a catch down to the 22 yard line. Nobody's saying anything. There's Ever one Crombie guy. And his rule to catch in a first down and 11 yard gain on the play. Walter Abercrombie coming out of the backfield took it right off the turf. May be reviewed. That ball did come in there very, very low from behind the defense. This is going to be tough to pick up because the catch happens right in front of the receiver. Abercrombie there. Oh, that's a catch. That's a catch, and that's a dandy one. You see Pittsburgh trying to run. Catch it is. So now the Steelers are quickly out of the huddle, moving the ball smartly after they've fallen behind nine to nothing. Now they're going to review it again, but I believe that's a clear catch. That's well done by Mark Malone. Felix Wright was the man in coverage. Malone trying to get up there the line of scrimmage and run a play as quick as he can, just in case the review doesn't. Might not favor him, but interesting development here. Trump Brian Blankenship just came into the game, a backup center. Where's number 60? He reported as a tackle eligible. He's number 60 when you see them come back. Here's the catch again now by Abercrombie. Well, that's hard to tell. I think he got it. Art, Art McNally, Pete Abitani. McNally is the one looking. If, remember, if there's not irrefutable evidence. All right, the catch stands. After further review, <laughs> the play stands as completed for his third down. Yeah, 
Having refuted, the play goes. Third down, and about two for the Steelers. It failed the Browns here in the second quarter. Nine to nothing. Don Tricky with Bob Cumpy on a 32 degree degree day in Pittsburgh. But the Browns going for a third straight championship in the AFC Central. And right now the play is broken up as they go downfield. Frank Minifield, a Pro Bowl cornerback, he'll start for the American Conference, strip the ball from the tight end Danzel Lee. Well, they're going to the sideline. He's been really been keying on goal. Like he's had at least two blockers on him every play, sometimes three. And now it's fourth down and about three yards. Gary Anderson on for the field goal. This will be a 39 yard attempt. You'll remember his earlier try was slapped back. It was blocked. Sims got three. This time he gets it up in the air and down the middle. And the Steelers are on the board with 8.48 to play in the first half. 39 yard field goal by one of the most accurate kickers in NFL history is up. And it is a 9 to 3 game. The Cleveland Browns have the lead and they'll get the ball in a moment. GM meets your challenge now. If you ask me to dish up my hard earned money on a new car, then you better show me some real quality that's uh, priced right. Hey. GM meets your challenge with outstanding quality and great value. It's backed by the strongest warranty in GM history. What about price? Most popular GM cars and trucks equipped the way you want are priced lower in 1988. And right now you can more than double your savings on option packages on some of our best selling cars. That's leadership. That's GM. Now Chevy announces $500 cash back on every new Chevy S10 pickup, every new 88 Chevy S10 Blazer, and advanced full-size Chevy CK pickup. $500 cash back. And that's on top of big savings and option packages. Your kind of Chevy, your kind of options. Plus $500 cash back. But hurry, time's limited. The heartbeat of America. Someday, a pyramid will be built for the public good, not for evil. A pyramid that will protect you from catastrophe. A pyramid that will help you prepare for the future. Nah. Today, the power of the pyramid is working for you at Transamerica. They are called Olympic hopefuls, but hope plays a small role here. For it will take a courage, a discipline, and a sheer will few of us will ever know. And if their effort is true, then they too will be known as Olympians. The Steelers after the field goal kick it off. Down it goes to the goal line. Gerald McNeil, the man who ran it back 100 yards last year in this stadium against the Steelers, this time is cut down at the 11-yard line. Greg Parr makes the stop. Gerald McNeil, a Pro Bowl kick returner, gets back only 12 yards in that run back. Now we go back to that attempt to convert the third down for a first down. Watch Malone. He makes a nice play fake here. They fake the reverse to 20. Dwight Stone. Golick 79 is right out there in front. Watch Minifield cover. He really gains a great deal of ground there in the last two steps. He makes that pass away. Pittsburgh has to try for the field goal, and it's good. Now, Golick's forearm is being looked at, but they're taken in for precautionary x rays. Mack stuck at the 11. Coming up to make the play was Brian Hinkle and Greg Carr, two linebackers. Greg Carr has really been coming on number 91 a sixth round draft choice in his second year from Auburn. He's filling from where very very deep too, Don. You can see Mac picks him up out of the corner of his eye. Mac is a Greg Carr is about five or six yards off the line of scrimmage and just going with that eye back wherever he goes he goes with him. See how deep he is way back there almost five yards from the ball. Second down and ten for Cleveland. Nine to three. The Browns have the lead. 
Kosar, an out pattern, timing pattern, and the connection is made as oh. Webster Slaughter goes to the moon and comes down with the ball. It's good for a 15-yard gain and a first down for Cleveland. Cleveland's pass offense, a little different than you see some others in that the ball is thrown a lot of instances before the receiver ever turns around. Now, when this ball is released by Bernie Kosar after the play fake, Webster Slaughter still running upfield. About now he turns around, and Kosar is so accurate. All he's got to do is get his head back in the right direction. That's a nice catch. Big pickup for Cleveland. Slaughter's made a lot. He's a team. Slaughter's made a lot, too. They won here when he was a rookie a season ago. He was a second-round draft pick out of San Diego State. Kosar on first down again, surveys the field. They don't want him running. That's one thing he does not do well. David Little slapped the ball back. It'll be second down and 10 for Cleveland. Bob Goley going out. That's a bad sign when they put that cast on there, that Aaron Elbow cast. He's going to go have x rays taken on it. If he cannot play nose tackle, Pizzuli will take his spot. Good coverage here by Pittsburgh. Runs Bernie Kosar out of the pocket. And David Little gets his hands up. Kosar running around back there. He's running about 15 times this year out of necessity and that was just over a yard of rush. And second and ten, Kosar play fakes and takes a look long. Lost it out for Ozzy Newsom. And the connection is not made at the 45-yard line. It was close. Coverage was good by linebacker Mike Merriweather. Cleveland doing an excellent job of holding the linebackers at the line of scrimmage, but Pittsburgh doing an even better job of getting those linebackers out there in coverage on the tight end. And you see Merriweather, he's waiting for the break. He's right there. He puts himself between the quarterback and the receiver. There is no way in the world that ball can be completed. Great second look. Our producer today for NBC Sports is Glenn Adamo. Our director, Ted Nathanson. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. We're coming to you from Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The divisional title on the line for Cleveland. If they win the game, they win the division. The Steelers also have to win to stay alive as Slaughter makes a fingertip catch on a third and ten play. But the Steeler defense comes up and cuts him down short of a first down. He got only eight. So now the putter for the Browns, Newsom, comes out for the first time. Thomas Everett almost makes the pickoff here. Tom. Johnson comes out the putter for Watch Cleveland. Thomas Everett. He almost comes up here to make the pickoff. The ball is right through his hands, and Slaughter makes the catch. He ends up being just an eight. Watch how close it is to an interception. There's Everett, 27, just somehow thrown above his hands, and Slaughter makes the catch. Ball hit downfield. Woodson comes up, taking the fair catch, and he'll give the Steelers good field position. Rod Woodson, a first-year player out of Purdue, makes the fair catch at the 42-yard line of Pittsburgh with 6.08 to go. Just a 23-yard punt by Johnson. So now the Steelers, after falling behind 9-0, Trump, have gotten their defense geared up, and they're looking a little bit better as the game wears on. Yeah, too, very cleanly played game. No turnovers and just one flag, and that was a delay of game. Turnovers are a critical area in 11 of the last 13 games between these two teams. The team that has committed the fewest turnovers has won. In 11 of the last 13, tomorrow's the final day of the regular season. 87 season goes to week 15 in this strike year. Most of you will see the Bengals and the Oilers tomorrow on NBC Sports. Look for the game and time in your area, leading off with NFL Live at 12.30 Eastern Time. First down and 10. Jackson turns up field, and he breaks ahead and gets to the 46-yard line. Ernest Jackson was a 1,000-yard rusher in San Diego. They cut him. Went to the Eagles. He was a thousand yard rusher. Buddy Ryan said I'd trade him for a six pack if I could. Steelers got him. He's been great here. Again, Golick, the no Pro Bowl nose tackle out of the game. Pizzuli not doing a bad job. There you see 53 Briggs making the tackle. The Browns now missing two starters. Golick and Mike Johnson off that defense. Golick being x-rayed right now. Injury to his right arm. Second and five as Malone stands in. He's got an open man in John Stallworth who's drilled, but he does get the first down yardage as he was positioned at the 47-yard line. The veteran who will one day be in the Hall of Fame, 
Going right where he had to be and right on his numbers with the tight throw was the quarterback Mark Malone. This is a little hitch. The Steelers want to take no chances throwing that ball down through the middle of the Cleveland Brown defense so they're just taking a little hitch on the outside and frankly gaining an awful lot of yards on it. Malone Trump has hit six of seven throws for 64 yards. Jackson up in there Clay Matthews shooting in from the right side also on the stop was the other outside backer Lucius Sanford in his 10th year from Georgia Tech. Now Jackson and Pollard are in the offensive backfield so we'll see if Malone can continue to hit the target as he's been accurate so far in this game. Lewis Lips one of the spectacular players in the league until chronic hamstring problems have limited his playing time the last two seasons goes wide to the right to the top of your screen. He can do it deep. Tremendous speed. Lewis Lips on the right flank. Ball with on the left flank. They're looking long. And Lips, here's a throw underneath now. With the ball is Theo Young, a tight end from Arkansas. On a second and eight play, he's down to about the 39 yard line for a gain of six. Chris Rockins on the tackle. You can see that the that the Pittsburgh Steelers want no part of Hanford Dixon and Frank Minifield down the field. They're going with the underneath receivers. 80. Leo Young comes across underneath the defense, underneath the linebackers. Malone right on the money there. Excellent tackle by Rockins. They're down in about three. Last time Pittsburgh tried to run on this same situation. Third down and three. See if they do it again. Set up with. Mark Malone ready to take the snap. He's going to gun it. Let's go deep. Not close. And very nearly intercepted as the heat was on. Coming hard was linebacker Clay Matthews. Mark Harper was defending on the play, and he was closest to the ball when it bounced off the turf. Matthews shows the blitz. He's basically untouched. You see Abercrombie realizes that he's the hot receiver Malone could have gotten it to him but on your back on the floor of Three River Stadium happens a lot when you got Clay Matthews on your chest Malone's as big as a lot of linebackers 6 4 2 20. So the Steeler drive stalls now with 3 15 to play in the first half and their punter is back out. Mason will hit the ball at the 49 yard line of Cleveland. McNeil fair catches it. Inside his 10 yard line. So Chuck Noll sends his defense back out. The Cleveland Browns building up a 9 to nothing lead in the game, scoring a field goal in the first quarter, a touchdown on a Kosar throw in the second quarter, extra point was blocked. Reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. Reggie Thompson. Looks like wrapping his knee a little bit there. And Malone talking to probably Tom Moore, offensive coordinator of the Steelers upstairs. Now Cleveland's got to be careful here. I remind you, Steelers defense, the top scoring defense in the NFL. They have six touchdowns, Steelers defenders, as many as the pass offense has. Kosar, rhythm passer, turns oh. it out, and Delton Hall would still be running had he had been able to pick that one off. The rookie cornerback from Clemson, big tough stealer in the mold of the future Hall of Famer Mel Blunt. He's already got two scores as a rookie. It looks like Delton Hall guesses here that it's going to be a short pattern. He takes a chance at the interception, and it almost comes up with it. Matter of fact, Don, if he puts two hands out there. I think he catches it and goes in for the score. He's another who's a big talker and backs it all up. He is tough. Stand out as a rookie at maybe the toughest position on the field other than quarterback, cornerback. Watch the blitz here, Don. Pump fake and a long throw. Delton Hall is right on the play, and it's tipped away from Webster Slaughter at the 40-yard line. They tried to take advantage of Delton Hall that time. Figuring he'd bite on the out again, they run the out and up. That time, Hall back in zone coverage, there to knock the ball away. That's excellent, excellent coverage by a rookie. You see, he always, he's already run the out. Delton Hall doesn't buy it. He's right there with him. 
again in a position where there's no way the, com the, the completion can be made. Well, here's the key down in the first half. It's big. It's third down and ten for the Cleveland Browns. They lead 9-3. Ball positioned at their eight-yard line. The green clock, 2.57 to go in the second quarter. Here they come. And they're coming hard. A free ball is in the air. It's going to be probably an incomplete pass. Looked like the arm was going forward, but we'll see. I think that's a fumble, Don. Pittsburgh that's ball. the officials. I guess that's what, that's what goes. Robin Cole came hard. I know they've been reviewing it, but the official right on top of the play looked at it from a foot away said it was a fumble. What has to be defined when they review the replay was was Bernie Kosar's arm coming forward when he was hit. That ball looked like it slipped right out at the top. But it looked to me like he was throwing it. Again, when he sets up, he knows the blitz is coming. 57 Merriweather on the outside. That's a fumble. No question at all. When he goes back, the thing just slips right out of his hand. His, his arm is not going forward. Watch this. He just loses his grip on it. That thing just comes out when he takes it back. That's a fumble. The, uh, that looked like one of mine in Buffalo. Uh, you know, Terry Bradshaw used to have that problem here in Three River Stadium at the beginning of his career. There you are. 53% of the points scored by this team. Courtesy of the Steelers defense. McClay Matthews saying, I'm going forward. No chance. No chance. That's a fumble. He's closed. The Steelers have the ball and they have it. Point blank range. No, it's now they're gonna they have their punter on the field, so it was not it was recovered by a Brown apparently. The Steelers signaled they had it, but they did not. It goes as a fumble and a sack. The, the uh, Cleveland Browns retained possession and must punt. They recovered the loose ball. Steelers thought they had it. They were all up signaling first down their way. There's no doubt that that's a fumble. Here's the call. The play was a fumble recovered by Cleveland. Fourth down. Everybody in Three Rivers thought the Steelers had it, but they do not. So the Browns get a chance to punt it. Dropping into his end zone to do that right now is Lee Johnson. Rod Woodson is back for the for the Steelers, standing at the Cleveland 40-yard line. Johnson, the only barefoot punter in the NFL. You see a lot of barefoot place kickers. Right now he's got to be a nervous punter because he's not doesn't have his usual 15 yard drop but they won't go for the block here they'll go for the return if they block it it'll go out of the end zone you go for the return this close but to me like they want to block it though the whole team came and he got off a poor one he had a 23 yarder before and it takes a bounce back at the Brown so the Steelers get the ball but that's a free ball Pittsburgh could have picked that ball up and done anything they wanted with it. Steelers get the ball inside the Cleveland 30. That was just a 25 yarder. So by putting the big rush on, they did indeed hurry Johnson. He didn't get up the product he'd like. Well, that particular time they didn't protect it very well. We've had three fumbles, and all three have been recovered by the team that fumbled them. That one hurt. Now, this is what Pittsburgh wants short field. Best starting position for any Steeler drive right now. They're at the 28-yard line of the Cleveland Browns. Browns lead the game 9-3. to three. Ernest Jackson. Down close to the 25-yard line. Don, did you just see Chuck Nolan on the sideline talking to uh, Woodson? I was watching the field. All right, he was exhorting Woodson that when that ball is illegally touched by the punt team, there's no jeopardy for the receiving team. Pick it up, do anything you want, any penalty called, it'll come back to the spot where it was illegally touched by Cleveland. Noel was telling Woodson, the rookie, look, there was a great opportunity for you when they're batting that ball around. Pick it up and run as far as you possibly can. Chuck Noel on the rules committee is well aware of that rule. So we're down to the two-minute warning. The Browns will have their defense out there. The Steelers challenging in a moment. Round of lights here. Ask for Bud Light. Go out, 
The light beer with the first name and taste. Let me know when you're ready for another round. Because everything else is just the light. <laughs> so what's little dandruff? Okay. Imagine you're at the social event of the year, and your dream girl says, hello, just as you do this. Her first impression? What a hunk. And only a few flakes. Give me a break. The breaks are you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So? So regular shampoos won't fix your problem. Try this. Head and shoulders? Well, you don't have dandruff. Bingo. Head and shoulders. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Bengals bat the Oilers. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL Live. Back at Three River Stadium, the Browns continue to hold to a 9-3 lead, but it's getting a bit nervous. As we pointed out in the past, the, this game has normally been decided by the team making the fewest turnovers. We have none so far today, but I think we're going to have one soon, Bob. Well, it does look like this is exactly what Pittsburgh wanted at the end of the first half. With the missed extra point, Pittsburgh can take a lead at the, at the first half if they can get the ball in the end zone here. And a, and a key play, a mistake by a rookie, was that Rod Woodson, after that ball was touched in that last punt, there is no jeopardy for the, the punting team. None whatsoever. Or excuse me, the receiving team. When that ball is, watch when it's touched and batted around. At the very end of this play, Woodson realizes it's short. He lets the ball bounce around, and Cleveland starts hitting it. But I don't think he was sure it was touched. That's yeah, but you can see that it's touched there. He could have picked it up and run it in. No problem for Pittsburgh. Second down and seven. Malone stands in and whips it over the middle, and it's not close. Again, he hits Astro turf. Penalty marker down. There might be a holding call on the Steelers. Got pressure from Chris Rockins right up the middle. And then hurried the throw by... Mark Malone, Harrison will he'll accept the penalty here. Holding, holding, offense, number 30, 10 yard penalty, repeat the down, second down. I think Pollard was assigned to Chris Rockins because Rockins was right in Mark Malone's chops there just as he threw it. Steelers with the least efficient passing game in the NFL. As you see the numbers today. Malone, high percentage thrower. He's hit seven of ten. But for the season, his numbers have been very unhappy. Six TD throws, 17 interceptions, a 47 quarterback rating. Of course, that was close to 100 rating coming in. Another connection this time. It goes downfield to John Stallworth coming back at the ball. Good timing throw by Malone. Good for an 11-yard gain on a second down and 20 play. Second and 19. Well, with that bad completion percentage of Mark Malone and with the four, four quarterback rating, it's not shown in this first half. See the bump and run by Hanford Dixon on Stallworth, but Stallworth uses a nice little hand move. Actually, that's illegal, and he gets away with it. The little swim move gets him underneath Hanford Dixon. Nice completion. Third down and about... Seven. Third and seven it is. Ball position at the 25-yard line. Let's pick it up. Long ball. Reggie Thompson. He goes high. And he can't come down with it, but a penalty marker comes in. It'll be against the Cleveland Browns. It looks like it. Pro Bowl cornerback Hanford Dixon was bumping. The Browns arguing their case that it was Reggie Thompson pushing off. You'll see by the reaction, one or the other, Ouija says, yeah. First and goal, Steelers at the two-yard line. Pass interference, defense, number 29, is a first down. Don, what Hanford Dixon did not do, again, the bump and run, is look back for the football. Positioning it at the 10 right now, it'll be first and goal at the 10-yard line. Well, you can see Dixon trying to look back. Well, I don't know about that. If there's not contact before, he got his head around. I don't know if that's a penalty or not. Watch again right at the end of the play. It looks like both players are looking back for the football. Boy, that's a close call. That is a true judgment call on the official. But it goes the Steelers' way. And so now Malone, with his team position close to the Browns' goal line, they've yet to cross it. Malone's not thrown for a touchdown in almost six quarters. Tip ball. He'll not get one here. Eddie Johnson runs it back for Cleveland. The Johnson comes up with a big play, and again, the Steelers are thwarted. And Mark Malone, here's the booze cascade down to Three Rivers as they have for him really since he started here. Never saw Eddie Johnson. 
One of the things a quarterback must be able to do is have a good field of vision. And that time Eddie Johnson snuck right underneath. It looked like Lewis Lips was going to be the intended receiver. Well, I take it back. Look at Stallworth as the intended receiver. And Johnson comes right from the left, right in front. Malone never sees him. What a huge turnover for the Cleveland Browns. Just absolutely takes the wind out of your out of your entire football team. A delay inside. Eddie Johnson with a great drop. The tip drill, and he comes up with the interception. First turnover of the day. Boy, that's a killer for Pittsburgh. Malone has thrown three times as many interceptions this season as touchdown passes. That was his 18th interception. Conversely, Kosar, who's directing the Browns offense now, has almost three times as many touchdown passes. 22 as interceptions. Eight. Swing goes, and Ernest Bynum with blockers in front. A 220-pound back from East Carolina, and a first down play gets out to the 38-yard line. Seven-yard gain. That's a nice defensive play by Mike Merriweather. The ball came out, but the ground caused the fumble. And the Browns go right back to the line of scrimmage. Art Modell has the same seating arrangement for his friends as they had last year when they broke the jinx here in Three River Stadium. They worked hard to break that jinx, change their mode of travel, where they stayed. Here's a throw and a catch out to the 40-yard line. Paying the price, but bouncing right up after he gets it is Clarence Weathers. Second down and three play, and the Browns call a timeout with 19 seconds to play in the first half. And we'll be back to Three Rivers Stadium in a moment. Who says Chevy's better than Ford? USAC tested standard half tons with their best automatics and half ton payloads. Zero to 60, 40 to 55, pylon course handling, full size Chevy beat Ford. Level and uphill towing acceleration. Chevy with Vortec V6 beat Ford. Which truck should you be driving? USAC test just answered it. Now, get $500 cash back on new full size CK pickups. It's today's Chevy truck. Mark Malone on the sideline after throwing an interception when the Steelers were in position to go for the go-ahead touchdown. They trail 9-3, to three, but the interception by Eddie Johnson stopped the drive. The Browns, Trump, have only 20 yards rushing so far today. When they get 100 yards as a team rushing, they're unbeatable at least the last 15 times they've done it. They're 15-0 and 0 when their team rushing total was 100 yards or more. 7-0 this year. That puts them ahead. Pittsburgh has two missed opportunities in this first half. A blocked field goal and then the interception thrown by Mark Malone. They're going at halftime trailing 9-3. to three. They've got to be very encouraged with the ball really bouncing against them or self-destructing in this first half. They're still very much in this football game. Halftime will be going to Bob Costas to Ahmad Rashad and Paul McGuire in NFL Live. 19 seconds to go. Let's see if Kosar tries to hit deep. He took it deep against the Raiders with great success his last start. Now he goes to the run. Good for a first down. Now the Browns caught another timeout, stopping the clock with 12 seconds to play in the second quarter. Ankle on the tackle. Game was good for five. There's Eddie Johnson. Man of the first half for Cleveland with that big interception. Howie Long said of Bernie Kosar after the Browns beat the Raiders, it's so frustrating with a guy like that. He's not even looking at you. But he can tell you there, and the pass is gone. You liken him and his ability to get rid of the ball at the last second to Dan Marino of the Dolphins. There's Lindy and Fonny, the offensive coordinator of Cleveland, Marty. And of course, Bernie Kosar. Bernie Kosar grew up in Boardman, Ohio, which is equidistant between Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Half the fans there are Steeler fans, half Brown fans. He grew up a Brown fan because his dad was. There's still a timeout left that Cleveland Browns have. One left. They might get two plays here. Seconds to go. You see the game clock ticking down as Kosar gets time and now screens it off to Ernest Biner. He heads for the 12th man and bails out on the sideline with four seconds to play. The reason the Cleveland Browns have that other timeout is that the last time they measured, the officials off 
offered them a chance to go with the official measurement as opposed to this using a timeout Cleveland went with the official measurement so now you've got one chance at a Hail Mary pass into the end zone they're stacking three receivers to the right Ryan Brennan Webster Slaughter and Reggie Langhorn one back in to block Ernest Steiner there it goes. Lots of people after the ball, and it hits the turf, and the first half ends. So the Browns hold off the Steelers with that late interception by Eddie Johnson of Mark Malone. And Cleveland, coming into Pittsburgh as a rare favorite over the Steelers, goes to the locker room with a 9-3 lead. NFL Live is coming up. Be right back after these messages from your local station. Sunday on Family Ties, Mallory makes the news. That's what separates dear Mallory from dear Abby. Yeah, that and a fully functional brain unit. And my two dads get the teenage blues. Then Oscar nominees Deborah Winger and John Lithgow. Academy Award winners Jack Nicholson and Shirley MacLaine in the movie classic Terms of Endearment Sunday. The best is what you get. The new 88 Plymouth Reliant America. We've added more standard equipment and cut the price to $74.24. The new Plymouth Reliant America. Quality, backed with the 770 protection plan. Now with a new low $74.24 price. The best is what you get at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. See your Northern Ohio Chrysler Plymouth dealers now. Let's talk your policy, dig up your bill. Leave it to the good hands, people. Do it right now or you know you never will. Come into Allstate and compare our low homeowner's rates. You might just save some money. Check through your files, look how you low. Get down to Allstate, you might save some dough. Leave it to the good hands, people. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Our year in review, Saturday at 7. So, blocking the field goal attempt by Gary Anderson, later intercepting the pass inside the 10-yard line against Mark Malone, the Browns are able to build a 9-3 lead at halftime. We'll come back, tell you more about the game, take a look at some of the highlights, and also check in with Paul McGuire and Ahmad Rashad at Three Rivers Stadium. All that during this halftime report, but first... Let's lighten the mood just a little bit and, as promised on the pregame show, return to the adventures of Paul McGuire and his buddy, Art Donovan, Fatso. Thank you, Robert. This is the second time I've had the opportunity to be with Art Donovan, and, and the last time we were together, I wanted to ask you this question, and we just didn't have enough time to use it. You're living in Baltimore. The Colts left in the middle of the night. They're now in Indianapolis. The Los Angeles Raiders, they're thinking about, they're, they're going to pull out and go somewhere else. St. Louis Cardinals, after the season, they're out of St. Louis. What do you think of, honestly think of owners because of some little flaw in the stadium or whatever? They're going to take their team and go someplace else. You know what I really think, Paul? I don't give a damn. <laughs> Period. <laughs> I mean, they're, no, they're, they're always mocking the players. They're no different than the players are. The owners, if a player would play for nothing, he'd let him play for nothing, wouldn't he? So the players <laughs> ask him for a million dollars, and if a guy gives you a million, you're going to play, right? I like that. And everybody here in Baltimore, you know, when the team left in the middle of the night, and, oh, they say, my God, what a catastrophe and everything else. That, you know, it was a happening. The team leaves. You'll always get another team. There's no doubt in my mind somebody will come here and play in Baltimore. A catastrophe is when some young kid dies of cancer or six kids get killed in an automobile accident. To me, that's really something bad. Good riddance to him. He left. Everybody didn't like him anyhow. I'm talking about the owner of the Colts. He was wacky. He acted like he got hit in the head with a hand grenade in the Second World War. So, uh, you know, hey, more power to the people. I don't know. And when you played, I mean, you're talking about nuts and bolts, the nitty-gritty. Yeah. Guys playing in the mud. Now they play in these dome stadiums. But what I want to talk to you about this time, the rules changes. For instance, in the grasp. Oh, beautiful. In, in the, the grasp of what? <laughs> they might as well put 
skirts on the quarterbacks because how does the official know when the uh, the, the quarterback is in the grasp? The, the, the official, he controls the whole football game. A guy gets an arm on a quarterback, he's in the grasp. That's another time they turn him around, he's like doing a, a dance, the pirouette or whatever they call it, and he says, no, he's in good shape, you know? I think that they, the whole game has changed. Now, big controversy. Big controversy. Instant replay. Yeah. You like that? Ah, it stinks. It takes really the play away from the from the official. He's got a tough job. He's got to call a play right now. He doesn't have a chance to think it over and then throw the flag. The only thing I can never get over, as long as I've been watching football, when you see a flag thrown, and then it says it was unintentionally thrown. <laughs> <laughs> I got to ask you a question, though, seriously. That, and you're an astute football fan, but actually, you know, a great player, 13 years in the National Football League, before helmets and before pads. <laughs> I look like it. <laughs> <laughs> you did a, I, why, why didn't you ever get into management? I, I didn't want to. I, uh, once I quit football... I mean, yeah, you, there's no reason why you couldn't have been the general manager. No, I'm not that smart. No, I, I've done all right. The only reason I've done all right is on account of my wife. She's pretty sharp. Me, I'd <laughs> give the store away. <laughs> really, what I really wanted to do was be a New York City policeman. I took the hat. <laughs> Don't laugh at me now. Yeah, but you still have to wear pads. Well, I guess I'll tell you, I have to wear a suit of armor. <laughs> I don't more than likely be a dead cop by now, but that's really what I wanted to do. Well, I, you know, I'm, we're here at your club. The right. Valley Country Club. Right. Now, you know, people say Artie Dunneman, you know, he says things, he's a little crude sometimes, yeah. he doesn't speak the English very well. But I look at this, and, I, you know, I, I see this magnificent country club swimming in tennis. Yeah. And here you are, a guy that, you know, played with the Colts, didn't make a lot of money. But now you have chefs here, you're eating caviar, filet mignon, <laughs> oysters. Yeah. Wait a minute, I'm not that. Crab. Giant lobsters. I mean, now you, you got it. You got it. And the guy cooking it for you. Oh, the McGuire. I never ate any of that stuff in my life. All I eat is kosher salami, bologna, Italian cold cuts, cheeseburgers, and hot dogs, <laughs> and a case of beer, and let me alone. <laughs> I'm fine. Some, Caviar. Yeah, but you can't eat hot dogs and drink champagne. I don't eat. I, I eat hot dogs and drink beer. I'm a very simple fella. Uh, by the way, the Paul McGuire Art Donovan Lecture Series goes on the road shortly. I believe the first stop is Bryn Mawr. One more item to clear up. Fatso is the name of Art Donovan's autobiography, Selling Like Hotcakes. It is not my affectionate nickname for either one of the two fellows you just saw. Now let's go back to Three Rivers Stadium for some highlights of the first half with the Browns looking to wrap it up in the AFC Central and leading 9-3. to three. There's the great Ozzie Newsome, 127 consecutive games with at least one catch. He ties Harold Carmichael for second behind Steve Largent. Al Bubba Baker, the well-traveled veteran lineman, blocking the attempted field goal by Gary Anderson to keep the game scoreless early on. Following a field goal by Matt Barr, here is Kozar off the play fake, flipping to the former replacement player, Derek Tennell, the rookie out of UCLA. They had the point after blocked by Rod Woodson, so it was nine to nothing. Here's a first and goal after a pass interference call against the Browns. Eddie Johnson bats it up in the air and intercepts Mark Malone in the closing minute of the first half. Off walks the dejected Malone, off the mark again indeed. The 18th time this season he has been intercepted. Nine to three in favor of the Browns. Let's go back out to the stadium. Paul McGuire is standing by along with Ahmad Rashad. Fellas. All right, Bob, you know, the thing that impressed me about Cleveland is they came out and played this game. I mentioned that there was a lot of intensity in the locker room, but they came out and they played the first half very businesslike, Paul. Well, you know, Kozar, he likes to throw control patterns. He throws the Mac, he throws the Biner, he throws the Newsom. But what you're going to see in the second half of this game, I got a feeling, because it puts so much pressure on the safety men, all of a sudden he starts dumping this ball, the safety start to cheat, and when they do that, then the wide receivers start going deep one-on-one, -on -one, and that's where Kozar can kill you. Well, when you talk about Pittsburgh, the thing that uh, Malone is doing, I talked to Hanford Dixon before the game, he said, we don't want him to run the ball, because we play man-to-man -man defense, and when we cover those receivers, our back is to the quarterback. So what happens, Malone, being a very good running quarterback, takes off running down for positive yardage. Two things. I would like to see him just... Don't read the press clippings and the things on Malone. Let him go ahead and throw the football. He can't throw the ball. He's got great receivers on the outside. The thing you're talking about, it just drives not only defensive backs crazy, but it drives linebackers nuts because all of a sudden, when they have to play zone and they have to get to a zone, 
and they know that before I get there, I've got to check first. Is he going to run or is he going to throw the ball? And it really puts the pressure on, on the linebackers because now they're caught between the zone they're supposed to be in and the one that they're stuck in. What about taking advantage of scoring opportunities? Now, uh, Cleveland in the first half took advantage of every scoring opportunity. When they got in it, within distance to get some points, they either got the field goal or they got the touchdown. On the other hand, look at Pittsburgh. Now, they get a chance. They get first and ten on this call. Can we roll this play in? They get first and ten on a, a pass interference here. Now, they got a chance to either get three points or get a touchdown and take the league in this game. Here it is right here. Ouija Thompson uh, gets the pass interference call here. They bring it down. They got first and ten. The very next play, Mark Malone comes back, throws an interception, blows the scoring opportunity, and they're behind at the game at halftime. First of all, I think Malone can throw the football, even though they boo him every time he does. But the other thing is Cleveland has taken him totally out of their running game. Now, you're down there first and nine. You've got two minutes to go in a ball game in, in the half. I'm like, go ahead and run the ball a couple of plays. That's not going to hurt. They've got big backs. They can run the football. And if you run the ball once or twice, it's going to take some pressure off those wide receivers and may be able to dump, do something, roll out Malone strong enough to run with the ball. I expect the Cleveland Browns here in this second half for their emotional level and their level of play to rise. Can Pittsburgh rise and stay with them? No, I don't think Pittsburgh can. And I know Bob Koss is back in New York, and he's very jealous of our hats. <laughs> yes, they All are right, lovely. <laughs> Actually, I'd prefer a mods to yours, Paul, but I know that's cruel to say. Uh, there's no question that the guy on the right is the one who's going to wind up on the cover of Gentleman's Quarterly. But, Bob Golick, a couple of questions. Do you have an update on his condition after the injured arm? And if he is unable to return in the second half, as appears to be likely, how will that affect the Browns? You know, it's really going to affect the Browns. We haven't found out just exactly uh, the... the uh the, the uh, seriousness of his injury, but if he's not able to come back, Bob Golick's role is not to make tackles, but to force everything, clog up the middle and force everything to the outside. If he's not able to play, it's not only going to have problems here in this game, but next week and so on in the playoffs. I think one thing that will happen, though, Bob, when, when you lose a great player like Golick, who is an all-pro, it just seems to make the other players play that much harder. And I, he's going to be missed a little bit, but not a lot. I disagree. He'll be missed a lot. He's a great player. He's going to the Pro Bowl. They don't have a Pro Bowl nose center behind him. All right. You guys battle it out out there in the booth in Three Rivers. We've got other business to tend to, and that pertains to tomorrow. More playoffs positions to be decided tomorrow on NBC. And here's a preview of the games we'll show you on Sunday. Tomorrow, it's the final Sunday of the regular season, and before the kickoffs, NFL Live's Ahmad Rashad presents his year-end achievement awards highlighting some of the special and goofy moments of the 87 season. Paul McGuire will also be on hand to give us his picks, and he'll go to the moon to find out from the quarterback himself what the Oilers will have to do to gain their first playoff berth in seven years. We'll also go out to Kansas City and hear from NBC's first female play-by-play -play announcer, Gail Sirens, on her assignment and the matchup between the Seahawks and the Chiefs. That one kicks off at 1 Eastern time, and the Seahawks have hopes of capturing their first ever AFC West title. They can do it by winning in Kansas City if the Broncos cooperate by losing to the Chargers. In any case, the Boz and company draw a wild card if they win tomorrow. The same is true of the Oilers, who are at least a wild card if they defeat Cincinnati at the Astrodome. They can win the AFC Central outright if they beat the Bengals, coupled with a Steeler win over the Browns today. In the city of brotherly love, Buffalo and Philadelphia square off in a game that features two young and exciting quarterbacks, Jim Kelly of the Bills and Randall Cunningham of the Eagles. Footballs will be flying, but both teams know they'll be left out in the cold when it comes to postseason play. So the Bills and the Eagles are part of NBC's menu tomorrow. Nothing is at stake but New York area bragging rights when the Giants and Jets meet at the Meadowlands. At the beginning of the year, it looked like this game would mean so much more. The Giants, by the way, are technically the home team. Then at 4 Eastern time, it's the Broncos going after another AFC West title. They play the Chargers at home, and they are the champs if they beat San Diego. The Chargers can be a wild card, but a lot of things have to break right for them. Dan Fouts is out. Mark Herman is in as San Diego's quarterback. So join us tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern time for NFL Live, followed by a star-studded lineup of NFL action. It's all here on NBC Sports. The crew is concerned they don't want me to be outdone by Rashad and McGuire, so Bob Faraccio, one of our cameramen, has generously donated his chapeau. Now, coming up on the post-game show, when the Browns and Steelers are done, we'll talk with some of the Oilers who are sitting around in Houston watching this game. They know they're at least a wild card. Most of them got up to make a sandwich during halftime, obviously enjoying this segment of NFL Live. But in any case, they're coming back when they kick off for the third quarter. They know if they beat the Bengals tomorrow, they're at least a wild card. But if the Steelers win today and then Houston wins tomorrow, they become the champions 
of the AFC Central. We'll see you again on the postgame show, and we'll return to Don Cricky and Bob Trumpy for the start of the second half following these messages from your local stations. Monday, Alf's a changed man. Sure, he's an attractive guy. That was the new Alf. To welcome Valerie's family back. You guys have a thing going on. Ooh. To TV's most explosive hour of comedy. Wow! New Alf moves fast. I'll handle it. It's Alf and Valerie's family. Come on home. Without a doubt, natural gas is the most efficient, economical fuel for a home furnace. But did you know that more and more industries are turning to natural gas for their furnaces? In fact, one energy company has helped develop and apply technology that uses natural gas to make glass furnaces more productive. And that makes our country steel more competitive. What company? The East Ohio Gas Company. The reality of an American promise, Monday night at 8.30. Don Craigie with Bob Trumpy back at Three Rivers Stadium. Score at halftime. The Cleveland Browns lead the Pittsburgh Steelers 9-3. I was talking Trump with Art Rooney, the man who started this Steeler franchise over 50 years ago and asked him what he thought. He said, I'd be a happy man if we ever scored a touchdown. <laughs> you can see the problem that the Pittsburgh Steelers have had today. They've gotten it to the Browns 32, the 22, and the 10 and come out with three points. Last week against Houston, they had the ball inside the 10-yard line four times, came out with just 13 points. Pittsburgh got exactly what it wanted, what it wanted at the end of the first half, and that was a big turnover, good field position. It wasn't a turnover, but good field position so they can drive the short field. Did not score. Uh, this is a game of emotion, and when that interception came by Eddie Johnson and the Cleveland Browns, that really hurt the Pittsburgh Steelers' chances. Because Cleveland starts the second half with the football, and 9 to 3 Cleveland's got to feel very very good about their chances but Pittsburgh in this ball game even with all the missed opportunities the kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser the king of beers as we're set now to start the third quarter Gerald McNeil ready to run it back bangs it downfield and here comes McNeil from a yard deep he gets the opening he's gone Whoa. Had a little bit of an opening. He was finally cut down at the 32-yard line. Coming down to make the play was Merrill Hogue. So after a 31-yard return of the tackle by Hodge, it's now going to be first down and 10 for the Cleveland Browns. And you can see the numbers are very, very even. That one turnover, an absolute killer because of the position that it happened. Time of possession in favor of the Steelers. One of the big factors now for Cleveland is the condition of Bob Golick they're all pro nose tackle x-rayed his forearm at half we'll find out we haven't found out yet what's wrong with it as the models mentioning at halftime it's not a pro bowler no matter how good he is you have it in a backup and that's what the Steelers run at the nose tackle inside running game but right now Kosar looks for a timing pattern he looks for Schroeder to go deep Kosar throws on the run and hits Ozzie Newsom for a first down as he takes the ball inside the 45 yard line down to about the 43 Ball. And that ball was originally intended for Webster Slaughter, and Gozart did a great job of coming off the primary receiver. Newsom runs an excellent pattern. Now he looks left, and Slaughter's deep. Watch Newsom at the top. You see Greg Carr, 91, the man in coverage. Newsom gets behind him, rolls away. Carr loses track of him. He ends up being a 25-yard pickup. So the Browns are going to start the second half with a deep pass. Newsom's caught four today for 50 yards. He's not been in the end zone yet this year. But over his brilliant career, he's caught more passes than any tight end in NFL history. Steelers left early. Keith Willis, the left end, and now there's a penalty marker on the ball on the field. But it's going to be a free play for Cleveland, really. Unless Willis was drawn offside. We'll have to sort this all out. But it appeared that Willis jumped early. All of that work was for nothing. Woodruff knocked it loose and came up with the ball, and it is offsides. Pittsburgh. Right there at the nose tackle. Offside, you. Side, defense number 93, five yard penalty. Repeat the down, first down. It is Keith Willis. Surprising, too. The guys closest to the football seem to be the guys who jump offsides the most. 
They're staring right at it, but I guess they're not convinced that nothing can happen before that ball moves. Some of the finest players in the history of the game, though, jump offside a lot. Joe Green, Joe Klecko, Deacon Jones of a number of years ago. He was so fast you couldn't tell. He looked offside even when he wasn't. Here's a handoff to Mack, who takes it down to about the 38-yard line. Keith Gary made the stop. Defensive end from Oklahoma. You saw the Steelers' possessions on the day. How about Cleveland? Started out strong, missed extra point. Makes it 9-3. Webster Slaughter goes wide to the left. The man who's caught seven touchdown passes this season for the Browns. Sure handed Brian Brennan's on the right flank. Looks like a throw down. Second and five. The foot is back, but they go to the run, and a hand up goes to Biner, who is knocked down at the 35 yard line. Bob Golick is still in the Browns locker room, his right arm being examined. He came out in the second quarter when he was banged up. David Little and Keith Gary were on the stop. I mentioned it looked like Bernie was going to throw, but once again, our key I think is good. But from my formation, the Browns don't seem to throw the ball when Bernie has his right foot back. See if it shows here. But obviously, a passing situation. Well, maybe not so. Third and two. Bernie's got that right foot back now. He sure does. Third and two it is for the Cleveland Browns, who lead this game nine to three. Decibel level picks up. Big crowd noise as there always is. Free ball on the field, but it's ruled an incomplete pass at the 31 yard line. That ball to Brian Brennan. Woodson and Greg Carr, the men in coverage. The Browns running a pattern just deep enough to try to get the first down. Brennan, normally very sure handed, just couldn't quite hang on to it. You see, bump and run on the outside. Brennan goes just deep enough to make the first down. Carr knocks it away. Well, his car in the last four or five weeks really had an impact on this defense. Rod Woodson is the deep man back. He blocked the extra point. Woodson, a national class hurdler, he has that sprinter start. He's a threat to block one every time he goes for it. Johnson will try to keep the ball inside the 10 if he can. And he'll do that at least inside the 15. The Cleveland Browns down the ball at about the 12-yard line of Pittsburgh. So Malone and the Steelers come out with the long field to go as they're 88 yards in the Cleveland end zone. They've not crossed that line yet today with 12.37 to go in the third quarter. Malone and the Steelers are set to go on offense. These days, you got to stay on top of things because times have changed. This small pickup, the Ford Ranger, now outsells Toyota. And what's more, Ranger has more features and a lower sticker price than Toyota. Features like tachometer, interval wipers, and light group. Plus, Ranger's got a fuel-injected engine. And to top it off, Ranger has a six-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty. Toyota doesn't. Sorry to burst your bubble, Toyota. But Ranger's on top now. Now, during Ford's leadership celebration, get $500 cash bonus on new Rangers. Every day, over 30 million AT&T calls go through on the first try. Thanks to a remarkably intelligent network that forecasts traffic, anticipates tie-ups, and determines the quickest way around them. All in less time than it takes to dial. The AT&T network, you can call it the mastermind of long distance. Glad I got through. We're reaching further to bring your world closer. AT&T, the right choice. Lafitte, Louisiana, and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Lafitte means flat bottom boat racing. And a Cajun feast that'll set your mouth on fire. And Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp, Old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden, Old Milwaukee life. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. An Old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee life. It doesn't get any better than this. 
So far today, Mark Malone's passing numbers for the Pittsburgh Steelers, 8 of 11. He's thrown the one interception, but what he's not done, Bob Trump, is get the ball deep, and that's what he's going to have to do if they're to score. Yeah, but Don, I'll tell you, with the score 9 to 3, the mixed, missed extra point, I think Pittsburgh can basically stay with their game plan, continue to try to run the football, and now the big factor is, with Bob Golick out, how can Pizzuli handle the nose tackle situation for the Cleveland Browns? That's something I believe that Pittsburgh will try to exploit as best they possibly can in this drive. We just got an unfortunate report on Golick. He has a fractured radius in his right arm. And preliminary diagnosis, he definitely won't play again today, and the rest of his season is in serious jeopardy. That's the small bone in the lower arm or the big bone in the lower arm? Do you know? You should know because you've broken them all. No, I didn't break that one. It's the only bone you have in you. I haven't broken playing this I game. think it's the big bone in the forearm. Six weeks is conservative. Murphy led the league in breaks. Pollard is stuck as he tries to go straight ahead, knocked back from the 11-yard line to about the nine. Tackled by Eddie Frank Brown. Pollard, a power runner, built close to the ground, 5'10", 230 pounds, in his eighth year from Baylor. Dave Pizzuli, the nose tackle up there with Sims and also Harrison, 78. You see him firing at that line of scrimmage. Sims does a great job to break up the trap block. And Pollard's got no place to go. The rest of this ball game is now in the hands of the Cleveland defense, Don. Brown's defense, one of the best, is the best against the score. Giving up the fewest points as Ernest Jackson breaks it for the moment. Safety, Felix Wright comes up and makes the play. On a second down and ten play, there's a gain of four yards. It'll be third down and six now for Pittsburgh. The reason I say the rest of this game is up to the Cleveland defense is this, a, this is a good enough defense to protect a six-point lead. They can run the Eagle or Barrett defense. They've got to have very tight coverage on Lips and Stalwart to the outside. And this is the kind of game I think Marty Schottenheimer likes, where it's up to his defense to protect the lead, win the game. Steelers don't pass well, but they were fourth in the NFL in running the ball coming into this game. But they need big plays now, and Malone's going for him right now. Against the three-man rush, he gets time. Gets it out to Stallworth, who somehow catches an underthrown ball, but he has nowhere to go, reaching back at it. And a third down and six play gains nothing at all, and the Steelers have to punt it from deep in their own end. Both Felix Wright and Mark Harper were right there with John Stallworth to make the tackle. Good coverage down the field. Malone had no choice but to go out in the flat. And there's two guys to make the tackle. Harry Newsom standing inside his five yard line. McNeil back deep for Cleveland. Newsom hits it long, but it'll come back at the Steelers as McNeil takes it at the 35. He's not going to run over anybody at 5'7, 147 pounds. Smallest player in the league. Tyrone Stowe, a 235-pound linebacker, smacked him a seven-yard return off a 49-yard punt. We're not a company, but outstanding people come to us every day. People who want to make a contribution to a team and do work that really counts. People eager to see new places, do the unusual, and find the unusual. People who become your friends for life. People just like you. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Army. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Okay, I know that Ford Taurus has a very contemporary design. In fact, I really like the way it looks. But looks are everything. Check it out for yourself. I'll let you know in a couple of hundred miles. Have you driven a Ford lately? Presenting a turning point in the history of screwdriving. The Black & Decker cordless screwdriver. A screwdriver so powerful it can drive a hundred screws on a single charge. Any less. And it wouldn't be the Black & Decker cordless screwdriver. America's leading consumer products rating service says one battery. Megatron 34 from Interstate tested best. It ran circles around better known brands and won by a mile. Megatron 34 from Interstate. Ask for it. 
Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. And by AT&T, the right choice. With Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey back at Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Temperature in the 30s, excellent playing conditions. The threat of rain seems to have passed for the moment. Right now, these are travels. The Browns and the Steelers locked up in a 9-3 game. Cleveland with the ball. First and 10, Cleveland leads the game 9-3. Browns win it, and they win their division for a third straight year. Steelers have to win and get help tomorrow to make it as a wild card. Robin Cole makes the play. Browns leading tackler this season is Mike Johnson, but as you see, he's on the sideline today. Strained a knee against the Raiders last Sunday. Browns are not superstitious, but just as they did last year, this year they brought everybody on the injured reserve list. Mike Johnson being one of them. Gosar with a TD throw and no interceptions. And almost doubled the passing yards of Malone of the Steelers. That was the question at the outset. Could the Steelers overcome the overmatch at quarterback? Newsom. Wide open, Ozzy Newsom. Both feet in, and he's out of bounds for a first down. Bernie Kosar again does it in awkward style. 15 or 20 years when he goes in the Hall of Fame, they'll say, gee, Bernie looked a little awkward getting his flack today, didn't he? 25 yard catch again for Newsom, his fifth for 75. A rollout. Brian Brennan is the primary receiver. He's covered very well. Kosar has the presence of mind. You know, when Bernie runs, he throws the ball higher. When he sits back there in the pocket, that's when he kind of slings it, kind of slings it as opposed to throwing it. That's a nice reception by Ozzie Newsom, too. His quarterback at Miami of Florida when they won the national champion, Schnellenberger said at Kosar, he's not only the smartest quarterback I've ever been around, he's one of the smartest people. Graduated two years ahead of his class. End up and up the middle running with the ball is Biner. He is thrown back on a hard hit by Tim Johnson a rookie from Penn State and a markers down at the line of scrimmage. That's another offsides by Pittsburgh. Look like Tim Johnson jumped across the line of scrimmage a little prematurely. We'll take the five yards make it defense offsides number 56 five yard penalty repeat the down first down. Now they said Robin Cole 56. I think it was Tim Johnson 78. I think he was misidentified. Tim Johnson right up at the line of scrimmage. Very top of the screen. He's looking at the football. Not convinced that that has to move before it's legal for him to get in there. And first and five. First and five it is for the Cleveland Browns. They lead the game in the third quarter. 9.50 to play in it. 9 to 3. This looks like a throw, Don. Back, but now he's crossing us up with that foot back, and Kevin Mack runs in very nicely. He's ahead for a first down. Rod Woodson knocked him out of bounds after a seven yard run on the play. Browns challenging here in the third quarter, moving the ball downfield. That big throw on the broken play. Dazzy Newsom set this up. See, Biner 44 goes in motion. He ends up being a lead blocker. Mack excellent at getting right up to the line of scrimmage and then bouncing outside. And you're right, it looks like our, our little tip on Bernie Kosar sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. First down pickup, Cleveland drive stays alive. Get an idea what Kosar has done at his age. He's younger than Vinny Testaverde. He's the, both the top draft choice last spring, Kosar in his third year. Another offsides. What is going on here? These guys are looking right at the football. Gary Dunn this time. He came out of his stance real quickly. Normally nose tackles sit there and look at the football. Encroachment. Defense. Five yard penalty. Still a first down. Tell you one thing though, you can't trust centers. They'll squeeze the ball. They do anything to try to trick you. Majority of those penalties, five yarders against Steelers just for being off sides. No, obviously not happy. So far, the Steeler defense has covered well the undersized overachiever Brian Brennan, who's on the right flank, 86 at the lower corner of your screen. 
Four long coasters going that way. First and five for Coaster on the Browns now inside the 15 yard line of Pittsburgh. This is zone coverage, Don. Somebody's going to be open over the middle. Brian Brennan incomplete at the four yard line. Good coverage by the strong safety, Donnie Shell. One of the things that I think Pittsburgh shows in their defense is when they have a linebacker and a walk away that's underneath the wide receiver, you know they're going zone. Ozar throws his ball into coverage, but he throws it low. And that's where you want quarterbacks to throw it down there in the middle of a defense so it's not intercepted. Shell almost came up with it. Schottenheimer said of Brian Brennan, when you're in tight situations, you think of people, not plays, and we think of Brian Brennan when we need a big play. This looks like man to man coverage here by Pittsburgh. Second down and five for the Browns. For the run they go, Matt tries to outrun the pursuit and does not, as he's thrown out of bounds at about the 13 yard line. Plus, actually about no gain. They'd gotten a yard with his forward progress. Cornerback Dwayne Woodruff came up and got him. Woodruff, an eight year veteran, and Delton Hall, a rookie, are the corners for Pittsburgh. Also, a nice assist here to. Thomas Everett the free safety he comes from the inside out and then Woodruff there and if you can, if your defense can string that play out to the sideline the pursuit will catch out and this young man in the last six or seven weeks been sensational for Pittsburgh interesting mix of the new and the old in the Steelers secondary the free safety is a rookie Everett the strong safety shells a 14 year veteran Rookie at right corner, eight-year veteran at left corner. Here's a throw to Brennan, but he can't hold on at the seven-yard line. Merriweather, a super quick linebacker, came on the blitz and got a piece of Kosar, forcing the early throw. Greg Carr up the middle, too. With a very, very late showing blitz. Kosar couldn't quite set up to throw it. The ball at Brennan's feet, and he couldn't make the catch, so... Steelers defense has done its job here. This drive started at the, at the Cleveland Brown 40. 30 yard try now by the former Steeler Matt Barr. Good shot. Hit the upright. Hit the left upright and it tear him through. So you can come home again. Matt Barr does. Back to Three Rivers and hits a. Karam shot to give the Browns a 12 to 3 lead with 920 to play in the third quarter. <laughs> Nervous moment but it went through. Snake River Wyoming and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. The Snake River means fly fishing for lunker cutthroat trout and Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold crisp Old Milwaukee beer and smooth golden Milwaukee Light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. An old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee Light. Fellas, it just doesn't get any better than this. Nobody does it better. In the new world of minivans, nobody does it like the Ford Aerostar. Nobody gives you the highly distinctive styling, the smooth riding comfort, the engineering innovations of Ford Aerostar for the discriminating. Baby, you're the best. Nobody does it like Ford Aerostar. During Ford's leadership celebration, get $500 cash bonus on Aerostar passenger wagons. <laughs> Fancy perfuming aftershave. It's got to be a quarterback's locker. Real guys who get mud on their uniforms use rugged, honest stuff. Ice blue aqua velva. There's something about today's... Aqua Velva Man. So you still think linemen are dumb? Trust your car's performance to luck, and someday it just may bite the hand that doesn't feed it. Give your car the good life with STP gas treatment. and brightest of the bowls are on NBC as Michigan's all-time leading rusher Jamie Morris leads the Wolverines against the Crimson Tide of Alabama and All-American Bobby Humphrey. Michigan battles Alabama at the Hall of Fame Bowl. January 2nd, college football's best and brightest are on NBC. Browns have extended their lead to 12-3 on Barr's second field goal of the day. Here's the kickoff downfield and here comes Woodson, the fastest stealer. Can't through, run through a wall of white shirts, and so he's knocked down, leading the charge downfield. The cover was Felix Wright. 
Bob Golick, the all pro nose tackle for the Cleveland Browns, who remember went out in the second quarter with an injury to his right arm. Since diagnosed as a fracture of the big bone in his right forearm. So his season probably ended, unfortunately, today. Picked this week to go to the Pro Bowl for a third straight year. Seven Browns go to the Pro Bowl, but the one who did not get voted in is the most valuable Brown of all, Bernie Kosar. Malone, deep drop, long ball, receiver fell down as he tripped, apparently not. A pitcher right there. Rules, no foul. Matt Barr, who just kicked that last field goal for the Cleveland Browns, has enjoyed some great moments in this stadium as a Pittsburgh Steeler. 1979, overtime. Barr puts it up and through. And that day, on that field goal, the Steelers beat the Browns 33 to 30 in overtime and went on to win Super Bowl 14. He made a great comeback a year ago against the Pittsburgh Steelers. He fractured, not fractured his knee, but he tore it up so badly it needed major surgery. And he came back now late in the season. His kick very well. Malone in trouble. Darrell Sims tries to run him down. And here's a throw up field and out to the 30 yard line. Markers are down. Oh, Frank Pollard makes a nice catch. An illegal man downfield. So that one will come back. Darrell Sims, good pressure on Mark Malone, former Pittsburgh Steeler first round draft choice, making a point to Chuck Knoll that I can play in the NFL. He didn't give him that indication when he was here, though. Offense number 52, 10 yard penalty, repeat the down, second down. That was obviously a screen as the center and the guards come out of there. Webster, you pull out of there and you go 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and then head upfield. And with the pressure by Sims, Malone flushed. Webster was illegally downfield. So now a difficult down and yardage for Malone and the Steelers. 8.45 to play in the third quarter. They have the ball second down and 20. Their 15-yard line. Cleveland 12, Pittsburgh 3. Malone lets her go, and Stallworth is down with it all. Cut down by the zone defense, short of the first down. It will bring up third and about five. Gain of 17 on that play. Hey, Otto, John Stallworth is doing an excellent job against the starting cornerback in the Pro Bowl, Hanford Dixon. Stallworth with a world of experience. Malone steps up in the pocket, throws this one right on the money, and look at that cushion. Stallworth is running some outstanding patterns because Dixon... He's not been able to cover Stallone. Stallworth very well today. Stallworth now with 540 receptions in his 14-year career. Blitz all the way. Whoa, he had the open line. D.G. Thompson off the left flank. Crowd calls for a penalty marker. Officials did not comply as Thompson ran an in pattern. They've been targeting Hanford Dixon, as you mentioned, Trump, a starting cornerback in the next Pro Bowl. Of course, when it comes to penalties or a lack of a penalty, the replay is no factor. If there's contact on this one, they were pretty close. It was just thrown a little bit too far out in front of Weegee Thompson. Gary Newsom into punt. Browns, of course, with another Pro Bowl starter at the other corner, Minifee, a low line drive punt. Back pedaling to the 19 yard line is Gerald McNeil. Ball. ball. Browns have it at the 29 yard line. 50 yard punt and 11 yard return. So Cleveland, as you pointed out, Trump cannot afford to turn it over, and they have not in this game. They've come close a number of times. Ray Ellis fell on the free ball and kept the possession for the Browns. Computers have revolutionized the way people work. But today, people take them for granted. IBM is one reason they can. IBM innovations over the years have helped make today's computers possible. Innovations like Fortran, the world's most widely used scientific programming language. And computer disk storage, invented by IBM more than 30 years ago, it changed the computer industry by letting people get information quickly. IBM invented relational databases too. So today, people can use simple commands to perform complex operations. 
Two IBM scientists have won a Nobel Prize for inventing the scanning tunneling microscope. Now researchers can examine atoms more clearly than ever before. This microscope is helping IBM develop new computer innovations that someday you'll be taking for granted too. Lafitte, Louisiana, and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Lafitte means flat bottom boat racing. And a Cajun feast that'll set your mouth on fire. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden, old Milwaukee life. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. An old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee life. It doesn't get any better than this. Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Bengals battle the Oilers. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL Live. Chad on duty a day after Christmas here at Three River Stadium. Browns are hoping for the big one. That's on their wish list for 1988. San Diego and Super Bowl 22. Steelers hoping to get in. They need a win today and help tomorrow to get in as a wild card. Had a very good draft in 87. Three of their first four picks were defensive backs. All good ones. Here's a throw and a catch by Langhorn. First down throw on the near flat. Gets the ball out to the 37-yard line. Dwayne Woodruff was covering. Gain on the play of seven. Well, i got to tell you that wish list for the Cleveland Browns seriously hampered with the injury to Bob Golick, their all-pro nose tackle. And also the loss of Mike Johnson, their leading tackler. Uh, it, it is it is expected that Mike Johnson will be able to play in the playoffs if Cleveland wins today, but still seriously hampered by a knee injury. You don't know how healthy he will be. And now the second down in the long four for the Cleveland Browns. Ball position just across their 35. They lead the game 12 to 3, 650 to play in the third quarter. Straight ahead run will be short of the first down. Kevin Mack is knocked down by Keith Willis. Two note from Bob Golick, who was injured today, fracturing the right forearm, is an interesting success story. See a lot of athletes like Donnie Shell is going to be in the Hall of Fame. The Steeler, many times an all pro, came in as a free agent. Golick came in as a high draft choice into the league and failed, or so they thought, at New England. He was drafted as a second round pick by New England out of Notre Dame, where he was an All American in two sports wrestling and football. Hadrius didn't think he was a good linebacker and cut him. He went back to his hometown Cleveland. They put him at nose tackle, and as they say, the rest is history. Go Bowl. Three straight years. Rosar, in his wisdom, sees something he doesn't like with those linebackers jumping in and out, so he calls timeout with 6.02 to play in the third quarter. Now, Kosar goes over for counsel. A break here at the stadium. It's 12 3 Cleveland. An important message for people who depend on their cars. For the seventh year in a row, Ford Motor Company cars and trucks have had fewer reported problems on average than any other vehicles designed and built in North America. Not just when they were new, but thousands of miles down the road. Now all our new cars, vans, and light trucks have a six-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty. With a warranty like that and a quality record like ours. Whose car would you rather be driving? At Ford, quality is job one. Users of nasal sprays invariably encounter the same problem. More voice. Sprays that roll out of their nose or drip back into their throat. To avoid this, they'll do just about anything. But now there's new Sinex Ultra Fine Mist. Its medicine doesn't roll out or drip back. It goes up and stays up, and that makes it better. So try new Sinex Ultra Fine Mist. It goes up and stays up. From Vicks, of course. Like Larry, Moe, and Curly. Fast cars and fancy shoes. Like Buffalo Bob and a lucky dog. And like cats who sing the blues. I'm an American original. The first draft beer in a can. Tap an ice cold puss with a friend of yours. Brewery Fresh Draft Beer in Bottles and Cans. That's been Coors for over 25 years. Taste the original today. Put a 12-ounce keg in your hand. Rushing yardage, the edge, as you see, to the Steelers. Coach Chuck Knoll 
has been on six championship teams four as a coach here at Pittsburgh and he played on two championship teams as an offensive guard at Cleveland which is his hometown. So Schottenheimer from the Pittsburgh area from Cannonsburg Pennsylvania. They're down and about a yard for the Cleveland Browns ball position at their 38 yard line. They lead 12 to 3 in the third quarter. Uh, offside Cleveland. Looked like the left tight end. I'm not sure it was a tight end at all, but an offensive lineman jumped off sides. They did not make the first down, so Pittsburgh has the opportunity to refuse the penalty and make Cleveland punt. Kosar performing very consistently with 26 throws. 16 completions, a touchdown, 176 yards. I believe this is on the offense, Don. Yeah. So you refuse the penalty and make it fourth down. See if we can pick up who it is. Larry Williams, who is lined up as the tight end. Cleveland offensive line hasn't done much wrong lately. Gave up no sacks All last size. week at Los Angeles Number against 70, the Raiders. Five yard penalty. Repeat the down. Third down. Third down wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why'd they repeat the down? Oh, I guess they, they wouldn't let him run the. Wait a minute. If they let the play run, Pittsburgh can refuse the penalty and it's fourth down. I think I think the uh, the umpire is they, they called encroachment were informed which would kill the play the, the foul before the snap of the ball uh, entered the neutral zone I don't know about that I don't know about that Art McNally just called down to tell us that so that means that the play was nullified it's good enough for me so from the spot of well, the ball was before. Actually, that's a great break for Cleveland. They get another chance to convert. Chuck Nolas was saying, what's going on here? Brown scoring came on the first. Correction. The foul was a false start, not an offside. Got a temporary lull in the excitement level, but this game will heat up. It always does when it's the Browns and the Steelers. Cleveland with a 12 to 3 lead scored on its first possession drove down the field and kicked the first quarter field goal second quarter touchdown pass and two yards out Bernie Kosar out of Derek Tunnell and they scored a third quarter field goal hope by bar the two field goals Steelers have not been in the end zone yet just the field goal by Anderson third and about seven it's slapped right back at them. Another admirable performance today by the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. They keep getting the ball back for the offense, but nothing happens. Gerald Williams looked like the guy. Bob. There's Joe Green on the sideline, the defensive line coach. Gerald Williams got his hand up. Kozar throwing that thing almost sidearm. That was almost a great break for Cleveland because they get another shot at it. Sims does the little roll there, gets his hand up, all knocked away. Cleveland must punt. Our NBC statistician Joe Costanza pointing out Lee Johnson is ready to punt now is averaging only 24 yards on three punts. All his punts have been 24 yards. The Woodson he is fast. Looks for a crack gets a little bit and gets the ball close to the 40 yard line of the Steelers a 33 yard punt and a five yard return. Tackled by Frank Winters. You know the Browns. Well, they got flags thrown. The Browns have changed kickers, punter and yeah. place kicker. And so far, Lee Johnson has not helped his team's cause much. That punt just 33 yards. We could put a cage around the field like WrestleMania. Nobody leaves the field. Yeah, well, nobody'd go in there either. <laughs> They've been going after every play. Last week, of course, Chuck Noll very upset at the antics of the Houston Oilers. On Pittsburgh, number 29. Personal foul, number 42 on Cleveland. Finleys are all set. First down. That's Cornell Gowdy on the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Mark Harper, is that on the other side? 23. 
There's a Tim Manoa. Well, whoever, nothing is gained, nothing is lost. First and ten, Pittsburgh. Cornell Gowdy, a first year cornerback from Morgan State. Now the Steelers are set, ready to go. First and ten, just inside their 40. Malone going on five games without a touchdown throw. Pollard. A play by Eddie Johnson, who you remember stopped that drive in the second quarter with his interception of Malone inside the 10. Loss of three yards on the play. You talk about a guy that comes with his game face on. Eddie Johnson wrote the book on it. Sixth year from Louisville. It'll unfold right in front of you. He reads that guard pull, 74. Terry Long looks like Daryl Sims, 99. Holds up Terry Long. He's not out there to make the fold block. Eddie Johnson for the tackle and loss of two yards. Kenny and Elk in the tackles, working along the guards. Webster at center is dropping to throw as Malone, running out of time, and now on the run. And Mark Malone beats the linebacker, heading for the first down marker. Malone goes out of bounds, very close to midfield. Despite surgical knees, Malone with good speed. He got 13 yards on the broken play. He does have good speed, still owns the Pittsburgh Steelers receiving record for the longest touchdown, 90 yards. And this is the one part of the of the Pittsburgh Steelers offense that I think should be used more. Malone on the run. You see the foot race between he and Clay Matthews. Malone stretches that ball out at the end. We well, should point out he didn't throw the ball. No, he of caught it. Receiving record. Satchel Page used to talk about could turn out the lights and be in bed before it got dark. He was used as a receiver on a number of occasions here in Pittsburgh when he was playing behind Bradshaw. Third and short. Up the middle goes Pollard. It's a first down for the Pittsburgh Steelers down to the 46 yard line. Here we go again with more pushing and shoving. This time it's Brian Blankenship. And he leaves the field. No harm, no foul. It's going to heat up a lot more than this. Watch. The official threw his hat on the field. I'm not exactly sure what that means other than to mark where the ball was, maybe. But first down, Steelers. First and ten from Malone and the Steelers at their 49. Play fake to Abercrombie. Abercrombie struck hard. Incomplete pass at the 42-yard line. Ray Ellis, the strong safety from Ohio State, came up and made the play. Malone wanted this ball downfield. Good coverage by Cleveland. He has to go to the outlet. He's too far out of Abercrombie's reach. And it looks like the injury to Bob Golick has pretty much taken the Browns out of their bare defense. That's right, it has. Playing the linebackers off. Their defense at 46 for as many as eight people come up to the line of scrimmage. Draw play. Potter looks for room. Nothing there. He's hit hard by Lucius Sanford. Knocked and thrown back on a second and ten play. So that puts the heat on Malone and the Steelers to throw deep on third down. Third and ten coming up with three minutes to play in the third quarter. Clock running. Browns in the lead 12 to 3. Trump. And the one guy that Mark Malone has been able to find in these third down situations is John Stallworth. He's had a good day against uh, Hanford Dixon. Big third down conversion here for Pittsburgh. Malone was the number one draft choice of the Steelers a year after they won the Super Bowl in 1980. He came in, missed all of one season with knee surgery, the 82 season. Still very mobile. Get the gun too. Lewis Lips down with the ball and the play of the game. Lewis Lips showing the All Pro form of a couple of seasons ago. High thrown ball. Somehow maintains his balance, a 27-yard gain for the Steelers. They have the ball down to the 18-yard line of Cleveland. Just the 11th catch for Lewis Lips. What a play. And you see they yeah. run. Stallworth kind of as a decoy. 
Clay Matthews, 57, can't quite catch it. Lips does. With that chronically pulled hamstring, went through a complete physical. He lost a little weight. Now he's trying to regain his stature on this team. He catches it. He's not done at his best after he gets the ball. And it's 40 to go. Third quarter. Fumble. Free ball on the field. Malone dove at it and appeared to get it. Now down in the first half, Pittsburgh got to the Cleveland 32, the Cleveland 22, and the Cleveland 10. It came up with three points. Now once again inside the 20-yard line, they got to get that ball in the end zone. Almost four down area. <laughs> Look at that. That's just broken. Well, it looks like Malone pulled out a little quickly there. That was not on Mike Webster, the center. Well, it's a waste of a play, second down and nine. <laughs> second down, Pollard up the middle, breaks it for the moment, gets down to the 10 yard line on a second down and nine play. He'll be a yard short of the first down, an eight yard gain, knocked down by safety Al Gross. That was a touchdown saving tackle. Look at the blocking notice. The trap up the middle, you see Webster almost influences. Webster's really something. 52. That's, that's Chris Rockins on the tackle, 37. Not Al Gross, 27, as I told you. I apologize for that. Now hang on to the football, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, 4 for 11 on third down conversions. This is a third and almost two. Abercrombie did not get there. They'll be short by a yard, and the Steelers have to go for it. They've got to get the ball in the end zone. Have to go for it. Well, the quarter is going to expire here, so Chuck Noll has some time to think about it. I agree with you. I think you got to go for the six points. They've had one field goal block. They would be down by six, and a field a touchdown on an extra point would win it for them conceivably, but they haven't been close to a touchdown, excepting that one intercepted play, and now. 12 to 3. Browns are in the lead, and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. He's an heroic figure with a romantic soul. A modern day everyman hosting Saturday Night Live. Are you with me? Ryan Holmes, today we build a better way for America's dreams to grow. Home so full of life called the brachial plexus. His arm was dangling by a thread in the region of the armpit. Hi. Just thought you might like to have my new number. Ryan builds a <laughs> yeah. better way to live. Someone put a bender in my left front fender. Leave it to the good hands people. I got it in the door of my four by four. Allstate makes an accident a little easier to take. We offer a repair guarantee, and in most cases, we'll give you a settlement on the spot. I parked in a lot in a place that I trusted, but when I returned, my window was busted. Leave it to the good hands, people. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Okay, everybody, dinner break. Warm up all your holiday activities with something new. McDonald's Holiday Chicken McNuggets. In festive 9 and 20 piece packs. Tasty chunks of chicken and two new sauces. Tangy cranberry with a twist of orange. And sweet apple spiced with cinnamon. Better chime in. Before holiday McNuggets are gone. Our year in review, Saturday at 7. That's a good one. Okay. Chuck Knoll says Mark Malone is our quarterback. We've won eight games and we're not changing despite the pressure from the fans and the media. Chuck Knoll is, as a coach, is 22 and 15 against his former team that he played for the Browns. The extra, uh, the field goal is booted up and good by Anderson to make it a 12 to 6 game. Now down the point to make now Pittsburgh has been at the Cleveland 32 the Cleveland 22 the Cleveland 10 and the Cleveland 10 and gotten six points out of it. Artie Schottenhammer is also a winning coach against Pittsburgh. This is the seventh game he has coached the Browns against the Steelers. He's four and two in the previous six. 
Well, Gottenheimer's had some career at Cleveland. He took over for Sam Rotigliano in October of 84. The Browns were 1 and 7 at the time. They finished 4 and 4 under Schottenheimer. And then they won the divisional championship the next year with an 8 and 8 record. Went 11 and 5 last year. Came a game from the Super Bowl. Beaten by the 98 yard drive of Elway and the Broncos. I tell you, I like Marty too. His line is deeds, not dialogue. Obviously, Art Modell likes him too. His team has accomplished a great deal under Marty Schottenheimer. Took a huge gamble beginning of this season by trading away Chip Banks, a Pro Bowl linebacker, and drafting Mike Junkin. And Chip Banks did not make the Pro Bowl. Certain amount of delight for the Cleveland Browns because that was a very, very big chance to take. Hey, among the young linebackers, Bosworth at Seattle gets the press. You look at the tape, the best two around in the first year are at Buffalo. Shane Conlon's been sensational. You don't hear anything about him. Rookie out of Penn State. Cornelius Bennett's going to be one of the best ever, potentially. To the six yard line, McNeil runs it back for the Cleveland Browns, and he's cut down at the 23 yard line. Merrill Hodge again with the play on special teams. The cube has got some guts, you know. Oh, good. He throws that, that. He throws that 147 pounds of his in there like it's 247. <laughs> I guess he never really looks at what the <laughs> what what, what the uh, sacrificing his body for love of the game. Yeah, he plays no no attention to the scale. Plays like he's 247. He gets on it, doesn't move. And he's half the size of a lot of people on the field. Open man running in the open field is Webster Slaughter. And he's taken down at the 50 yard line. And it might be a penalty call on Delton Hall, who hunted the head, making the tackle. That'll be an unsportsmanlike conduct or a personal foul. 15 yards tacked on. Now you like Delton Hall's aggressiveness but sometimes rookies just try a little too hard to prove their point and this one this was a shot across the face personal foul, personal foul. face mask penalty is declined personal foul blow to the head 15 yards first down that's tacked on that should be tacked the number on number is 35 35 Delton Hall on the penalty that ends up being a 41 yard pickup. Slaughter now four catches for 66 yards. I once asked Chuck Noll about all the tough people they put on the field. I said how do you coach that. He said you don't coach it you draft it. Delton Hall came in talking a big game and playing one right away. That was a rookie mistake though. Sometimes you try to prove your point a little too often and on that one. Delton Hall really got caught. He thinks he's tough, and he is. 14-24 to play in the game. Yeah, but, Don, you don't have to prove it like that. No, you're right. Mel Blunt, one of the toughest guys to ever play the game, played cornerback, same spot that Delton Hall's in now, was one of the cleanest ball players that this game has ever known. And for you to say that is a some magnitude because he puts you into next week on one occasion. Yeah, I still don't know what happened at 18 hours. He knocked fillings out of your teeth. But he did it cleanly. First down and ten for the Cleveland Browns who lead the game 12 to three in the first minute of the fourth quarter. A win today and the Browns win their division. Long ball. Biner going for it. Throw his hands at the two yard line. Kosar on target. At the outset of the game we looked at the spotlight areas That's for both teams. For the Cleveland Browns no turnovers offensive patience they've not turned the ball over. I think Cleveland has really stayed to that game plan and for the Steelers run effectively and they have not at the first drive of the game they did and did very well but since then because they've gotten behind they've had to try to throw the ball and of course the big turnover by Malone and the four chances inside the twenty five resulting in six points only six points. Second down and ten now for Cleveland. Blitz. Kosar eats it up. Goes to Newsom. There's markers down all over the field. That's a finer. 
He was flanked out as a wide receiver, and Ernest Biner was quick at the count. So watch Biner at the top. There's Woodruff out there, the cornerback. Number 44, five yard penalty, repeat the down, second down. Osara, 62% passer this season, hitting 60% of his throws today. He's hit 18 of 30 for 209 yards and a touchdown. No interceptions again. None last week against the Raiders, and he wasn't sacked at all. He's not been sacked today. Looks like a throw here, Don. That puts back. Second and 15, it would be a good idea, and there it goes. Loop pass downfield. There's the connection made to the... Wizard of Oz, Newsom from Alabama, in his 10th year, comes down with the ball for a 21-yard gain, his sixth catch of the day. He has been the big offensive factor for the Cleveland Browns. Ernie Kosar has found him everywhere. Came into the ball game with just 28 catches. That one good for 21. You see Biner clears out. Dwayne Woodruff, the defensive back. Newsom runs right underneath it. Nice big pickup. Good arch on that ball, too. Right over the linebackers' coverage. When Cleveland's had to make the plays, they've done it, Don. They have. They can put this away, put the top on. If they take it in here, they go to the run. Kevin Mack wisely protecting the ball with both arms, takes it down close to the 17-yard line. David Little, inside backer, number one tackler for the Steelers, made the stop. Along with Greg Carr, who really fires into this defensive line. He's reading through the guards in the center. He sees the block coming all the way. Looked like Biner 44 was the guy who was going to try to get a hat on him, but Carr jumped inside and assists on the tackle. Steeler defense has to make something big happen. They're to get back in this. Down 12 to 3 with 12.50 to play. Block running in the Browns, challenging again. Second down and eight. Audible, audible. 12-6, excuse me, after that second field goal. Oh, and a catch by Brian Brennan. Down to the eight-yard line. He caught a ton of balls at Boston College from Doug Flutie and his BC's all-time leading pass catcher, Brian Brennan. That was a great job by Kevin Mack. Greg Carr blitzed up the middle. Mack was able to get right on Greg Carr, allow Bernie Kosar the time to find Brian Brennan. Now watch what happens. Watch 91. You see Mack turns around. He sees Carr coming, and that allows Bernie the time to make the completion. Excellent pattern run. And the offensive coordinator at Cleveland, Lindy and Fonny, likes that one. Just the way you draw it up on the chalkboard. Raven first down and goal. Bang come the Steelers. Keith Gary. Tackled by Gary. From Oklahoma, number one draft choice five years ago. Looks like he jumps inside of the offensive left tackle of the Cleveland Browns. Paul Farron, I believe, 74, is right there to make the tackle along with Greg Carr. The Oklahoma Sooners loaded with great defense again this season. Coach Switzer's had the Sooners in Florida a week early, going through two a day closed practices. For next Friday night's matchup at Orange Bowl 88, the national championship game here on NBC Sports following the Rose Bowl, which follows the Fiesta Bowl. Well, in the flat, Newsom couldn't get there. As on the blitz came Greg Carr up the middle, and he was hunting hard with a forearm delivered to the face of Bernie Kosar. That time, Kevin Mack just couldn't quite get around Bernie Kosar to pick up the blitzer. Carr times it perfectly. Just as the ball is snapped, he's right at the line of scrimmage. You see Mack try to get over there and get him. This time he can't get him. Kosar can't make the completion. You're taking a big chance by blitzing that middle linebacker. But if he can go through untouched, he can stop the pass attempt. So now third down and goal from the nine. Trips formation. Three wide receivers set to the right. One to the left. Slaughter's left. Kosar stands in, swings it out. Brennan makes the catch despite taking the hit just as he got the ball. He's thrown back. Markers come down again as they're swinging full speed at the 10-yard line. We 
he had guys going right at it. That was Mike Merrillweather. Lupe Sanchez was the man in coverage. Now they're really going at it. Delton Hall. Just like we like it here in Pittsburgh when the Steelers hook up with the Browns. You can't help this. It happens every game. That's Delton Hall and Webster Slaughter. Now an official on the field. Somebody's going to watch the rest of this game, not play. Hey, Delton, uh, Delton Hall is being now advised in no uncertain terms by his teammates, but it might be too late. He might be out. The officials are gathering on the sideline. There'll be a man advantage here. Two minutes of power play. <laughs> Coincidental minors. Get that game misconduct though for Delton Hall. Big play though by Lupe Sanchez keeping Brian Brennan from getting the ball to that first down marker and then near side of the field. A hockey game did break out. Bob Costas will be further reviewing the playoff implications when this game is over so stay with us but coming in if the Cleveland Browns as you know won it they win the division we'll get to that in a moment here is the referee Dick Hantak if they lose though, there's a very good chance they'd have to go to Seattle if the Seahawks win tomorrow at Kansas City and that's not a good place to win a game at the Kingdom we had unsportsmanlike on number 74 on the offense we also had unsportsmanlike on the defense those two penalties offset Later, we had unsportsmanlike on number 35, Pittsburgh. We will penalize half the distance. First down. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You talk about a hot bunch of guys. That Steeler defense. Browns are first and goal at the four. I wouldn't want to have to run into those Steelers right now. Paul Farron talking to Marty Schottenheimer and Chuck Knoll saying, wait a minute. How do they make yards on this? There's Farron. the dead ball. It was another personal foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct call. Personal foul. Half the distance. Automatic first down. Well, the thing is, is that Hall, even though he's coming out, is still in the game. Has not been thrown out. There's Dick Hantek over talking to uh, Chuck Knoll. They always seem to get the second guy. Whoever threw the first punch, and I think it might have been Webster Slaughter, Hall on the retaliation is the guy who gets the penalty called on him. Now he's not thrown out of the game. They've gone to the goal line defense the Steelers have, so he's still in the game. But that's two big penalties now on Delton Hall. One to the head in this drive. Ended up being a 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct, and now this one half the distance to the goal. Are we reviewing again? Maybe we're not done yet. Coach Snow would like a full explanation. He's going to get it. Not easy being an official. When they're right, no one remembers. When they're wrong, no one forgets. 10.54 to play, 12-6. The Cleveland Browns are in the lead. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Steelers and the National Football League is prohibited. Marty says you don't have to tell me anything. I like it. Whatever you say is all right with me, Dick. No problem. We have an additional penalty. Oops. Pittsburgh. Number 35, 35, 35, is ejected. Whoa. No wonder Chuck Knoll was complaining so much. Delton Hall is history. He's out. And the Browns, and we do resume play, will have it first and goal at the four-yard line.
Easy now. Delton Hall did have some indiscretions, but this guy has a tremendous spirit. He's going to be a tremendous player. He is already. You don't want to see guys making 15 yard penalty mistakes, particularly when they get him sent to the bench. But he is a big time player. You can't call him a rookie anymore. He started every game this season that the regular players have played. And sometimes you do have to channel that energy in the right way, not the wrong way. Now we got an official going to the sideline to talk on the phone. Here's Art McNally on the right, Pete Abitani on the left. Somebody else on the phone. I guess it wasn't for him. That's the umpire. Thorough they are, expedient they're not. Gordon Wells is the umpire. At the moment, it stands 12 to 6. Cleveland Browns lead the game with 10:54 to play. Apparently, there is a, a question as to where the ball could be spotted. Now, how big a play was that? Remember, that was a third down and goal, and because of the penalty on Delton Hall, first and goal. On the two offsetting penalties, first, the Cleveland Browns would have had to try to kick the field goal. Another huge penalty on Pittsburgh. Talking about where the ball should be spotted. Can we go to local news? Or? There you see his equipment, the mouthpiece and also the earpiece for the umpire. He's the only one that's in contact with the instant replay. This is going to be a post possession foul. So from the point where the ball was down it'll be half the distance to the goal first and goal Cleveland. Pittsburgh has done a great job of keeping this drive alive for Cleveland. Yeah. Fouls were offsetting and Delton Hall committed a personal foul after the ball was dead. So that was an automatic ejection personal foul on the dead ball. Half the distance to the goal. First and goal, Cleveland Browns. The ball stays where it is. That's a monstrous play in this football game. See if Kosar tries to offset the anger of this Pittsburgh defense by letting him come in the rush and dumping it off on a throw. No, to the run to Kevin Mack, and he's going to be stopped at the two or three yard line. Second and goal from there. At least we're back playing. David Little, Brian Hinkle on the tackle. What a monstrous play that was. Keeps the drive, al drive alive. And it was a third down and about seven. And it's actually a third down and goal from the seven. to Biner. Mack leads the blocking. Takes down one man and into the end zone for a touchdown. Let's see the signal. You haven't got it yet. There it is. It is touchdown Cleveland and the Browns extend their lead to 18 to 6. I think Cleveland can thank that gentleman right there for that score. Two personal fouls. Now watch this play that orange cone you see on the goal line is inbounds in the end zone. Excellent block by Mack. All he has to do is get one foot in there and hit that cone and whether you like it or not he's in the end zone. So Matt Barr is up for the point after attempt now at 936 to play in the game 18 to 6 Cleveland in the lead. And a big step closer to the third straight divisional championship and the home field in the first round of the divisional playoffs. 
Steelers with a loss today are history, so when they get the ball, Malone has no alternative. He has to start firing deep. Radio Shack's new portable cellular phone. A price and technology breakthrough. Look at the whole world in your hand. Only at Radio Shack, the technology store. Introducing a small sedan made the Mazda way. The new Mazda 323 SE has a bunch of technical sophistication, like fuel injection, a roomy interior, lots of standard features, all backed by the best warranty in its class. I'm not kidding. You've got to check out this Mazda 323. Not only is it the best value in a small sedan, it also has the solid feel and performance of an expensive road car. This is the Mazda Way! Today's game is brought to you by Michelob. So exceptionally smooth, the night belongs to Michelob. By Mazda, bringing performance and value together. That's the Mazda Way. And by new Sinex Ultra Fine Mist. It goes up and stays up. Browns fans are here, but not in abundance. There's a very tough ticket in Pittsburgh. Only 400 Browns fans got tickets to this game. But they've had something to cheer about as the Browns now lead the game 19 to 6. And here come the Steelers as Dwight Stone takes it over the top and out to the 27 yard line. Since the National Football League went to divisional play in 1970, these two teams have dominated the AFC Central. 13 of the 16 previous Central titles have gone to Pittsburgh or Cleveland. Steelers have won nine, the Browns four, close to winning a fifth. Penalty yards have been a big factor, especially in this second half, and especially in that last drive, and most particularly in the person of Delton Hall. Steelers have a good offensive line and good running backs. Where they start running the ball now, they are conceding the game. At 9:27 to play. They've got to throw downfield, like it or not. It's not their game, but their history. Lost today, they have no hope. They're gone. Malone looks. He lets it go long. Out there is John Stallworth, and it's intercepted by Hanford Dixon at the 47-yard line of Cleveland. Pittsburgh wants to do, but they have no choice. That ball way underthrown by Mark Malone. This is the third straight year, Trump, that the Steelers will not go to the playoffs. Very unsteeler like. Used to be a playoff check was part of the deal when you played for Pittsburgh. You see Dixon at the top of the screen. Stallworth is the intended receiver. Malone is looking down the middle, then goes to the far side. I don't think that pressure by Carl Harrison is part of it. This ball is just terribly underthrown, and it's an easy interception for Hanford Dixon. Second of the day for Cleveland. To the run go the Browns. Nothing there for Kevin Mack. Good defensive play. Shooting the gap was linebacker Robin Cole, an 11 year veteran from New Mexico. When that ball was thrown, Malone is looking, looking, looking. He's trying to watch with two interceptions today, now 19 on the season. This is Chuck Knoll's 300th game as head coach of the Steelers. And that one he'll want to put in his memory bank. Well, they are unkind to Mark Malone here. And the last interception, one of the reasons why. We thought about Santa bring us a new quarterback. Ours is broken. Not easy. And Mark Malone in Pittsburgh these days. Bernie Kosar can't get to the sideline. He doesn't want to. He bails out. That's right. Well, he wants to keep that clock going. In his wisdom, he does. 8.25 to play in running. 19 to 6. The Browns in the lead. 
Tim Johnson flushed him out of the pocket. Greg Carr, none for the thumb till Malone's done. <laughs> Except, I mean, these people here in Pittsburgh have forgotten what Terry Bradshaw was like his first four years. I mean, the numbers, you can say what you want, but the numbers are better for Malone than Bradshaw. Let me ask you something. Do you think he's going to turn into a Bradshaw? No. But as I said, the numbers are better. They're down in long, long yardage. Third and 21, pump fake and an incomplete ball. This could be run back the distance. Moving the ball back is Cornell Gowdy. He's going to take it in for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So all of a sudden, with 7.33 to play, the Steeler defense rises up, scores its seventh touchdown of the season. More than Malone has produced passing, a 43-yard return by a first-year player from Morgan State, Cornell Gowdy, and the Steelers are back in the game. 19 to 12 with the extra point coming up. That's the seventh touchdown this defense has scored. They've now scored more touchdowns than the Steelers have produced in the passing game. 45 yards officially. Bounced off the receiver's hands. Gowdy there to take it in and watch what happens. Well, we'll watch after the kick what happens. Very important extra point. It brings the Steelers back to within six. The fifth interception return this season for a touchdown by Pittsburgh. And the seventh score by the defense. So the Steeler offense has not produced a touchdown, but the defense does, and the Steelers are back in it. Introducing a high-performance luxury sports coupe made the Mazda way. If you like the idea of going places in a hurry, check out Mazda's all-new MX-6 GT. A turbocharged, intercooled 12-valve road machine that'll outrun the top of the line onto Prelude and still run you a cool two grand less. Believe me, you don't have to drive it this hard to love it. You just have to drive it. about this Pittsburgh Steelers defense mentally tough under Chuck Noll they have very seldom lost games that they're supposed to win last week against Houston was one of the rare ones and as long as this team can stay alive Art Modell and all the rest of the Cleveland Browns got to be wondering what do we have to do to win a game comfortably here in Three River Stadium well, they've forgotten about comfortably and a worse getting thing. out with their uniforms and a one point win is fine and the worst thing is the Steelers defense back out on the field after this kickoff return. McNeil, 147 pounds. Looking for license plate numbers. He just got hit by a bus. Greg Carr, a linebacker, got him. We're going to start up again. They might build something in the offseason, something tag team or. I don't know, but you'd think they'd learn. <laughs> Both teams need every player they possibly can muster out there for the final seven minutes and 25 seconds. Now, once again on the interception, Kozar, when he rolled out a little bit, 
looked like an easy completion. You'll see the receiver come behind the linebackers. He pumps downfield, bounces off the hand of Curtis Weathers, Clarence Weathers, and Gowdy takes it in for the defense's seventh score of the season. And again, the Steeler defense has put the team back in the ball game. Steeler fans really ripping it up in the stands now as the Browns go to the run and get plenty as a straight-ahead run takes it out to the 27-yard line. Liner. Gary Dunn was on the tackle. Delton Hall leaves the field. Might as well shower. Well, they got replacing him now. Lupe Sanchez is at corner. Yeah. I have a uh, I have a feeling the minute the Cleveland Browns identify who's at corner, Webster Slaughter is going to get the ball. Slaughter near side on Sanchez. Loopy's a safety, not a corner, Don. He's playing way off, Brian Brennan. Second down and a long five. Straight ahead carry, Kevin Mack takes the ball, and he's knocked down by Greg Carr. Carr again for the last three or four weeks been sensational for this defense. Really, he's been terrific. Maybe faced assassin. Not a particularly big kid, about 218, maybe 20 pounds, as is the case with the rest of the linebackers for Pittsburgh. Larry War Eagle from Auburn, Greg Carr. All out to the 31 yard line. Third down and two. Lone setback is Biner. Plays are so tough now. He wants to be sure. So the Browns use their second time out of the second half. They have just one remaining. Now they go together for some counseling. We'll pause here at Three Rivers. 5.57 to play. We're not a company. But we recognize potential. We develop it. We use it. We'll make sure that as your responsibility grows, so will you. As your ability for leadership grows, so will you. Working with us, you'll gain self-confidence. Become a person with a future. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Marines, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. We're the armed forces. It's a great place to start. I don't know where to start telling you about Mazda trucks. Eh, they've been rated first in customer satisfaction two years in a row. They got the best warranty in the truck business. It covers you bumper to bumper. This 40 new SE5 comes with everything you're looking at, and it's still priced like Toyota and Nissan's base trucks. So I don't know where you start. I guess it doesn't make any difference. You wind up here. This is the Mazda way. Like a top-down neon drive-in, like a Sugar Ray Express, like made in the shade, like making the grade, like the coat of the old Wild West. I'm an American original, the first draft beer in a can, tap an ice cold course with a friend of yours. Brewery Fresh draft beer in bottles and cans. That's been Coors for over 25 years. Taste the original today. Put a 12-ounce keg in your hand. Kick off the new year with NBC at the Fiesta Bowl when Florida State faces Nebraska. And the USC Trojans take on Michigan State in the Rose Bowl. Then it's the battle for the national championship as number one Oklahoma takes on number two Miami at the Orange Bowl. New Year's Day, college football's best and brightest are on NBC. Orange is showing in the stands. Some people bailed out when the Steelers were way down, but now they've come back. 5.57 to play. 19-13. Cleveland in the lead. Third and two coming up for Kosa on the Browns. Looks like a throw, Don. Gets back. Biner. And he turned the corner and make it upfield. He does. He has a first down for Cleveland. Boy, this is an important spot. Yeah, Lock he's got stop. the first down. A lot of time left, though. 5.51 to go. Browns are already in the playoffs. Worst they can do this season is a wild card spot, but they could go on the road to play in that next weekend. First and ten, Cleveland Steelers are history unless they win this game, and then they need help tomorrow. The ideal situation for Pittsburgh would be to win and then have Seattle lose to Kansas City, which would be an upset. The Oilers. 
Steelers looking on intently. They, they're rooting for the Steelers. And off straight ahead on first down. There's not much there. As running with the ball is Ernest Biner, knocked down by Greg Carr, who has to have 15 tackles in this game. They're going to be very, very conservative here. And Don, I still think the race in the hole is Lupe Sanchez at corner on when they need it. I think they're going to go to it. There are the variables, but Pittsburgh must get. Must win first. Yeah. Down to the basics. Second down and eight for the Cleveland Browns. They lead 19 to 13. Kevin Mack upfield, and he's ahead for a Cleveland first down and stays in bounds at the 46 yard line. Nine yard gain on the play. Rod Woodson on the tackle. Browns offensive line doing an excellent job of capturing the corner so that the running backs can turn up. There they are. 61 Bab. 70 Williams, Farron 74, 63 Ryzen. There's and the elite group of Cleveland Browns, seven of them picked for the Pro Bowl. None for Pittsburgh in the 38 years they've been playing the Pro Bowl is the first time the Steeler has never gone. Webster very well could go for a ninth time because the standout for Miami Dwight Stevenson's out with an injury. Sides. Keith Willis, the left end, broke early. First and ten play. That's the third time we've seen that in the second half. Offsides defense. And it gives Cleveland a first and five. Jumps offsides again. Willis, an undersized Offside. overachiever also. Free agent from Northeastern. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Only about 6'1", 250. But so quick he's almost impossible to block. And he comes at the quarterback about a foot off the ground. He has astounding balance. A great first step. Always present in great pass rushers. Willis has got it. A great first step. He's been a sack leader in years past for the Steelers. Right now they've got to put the heat on Kosar though. Nice down for the Browns. First and five. Kevin Mack. Much there. Got ahead for a gain of about a yard. It'll bring up second down and four. Gary and Carr. Carr again on the tackle. He's looking right at that running back. Reads it very well. Look at him slide along the line of scrimmage. Oh, that's great technique by a young man out of Auburn. He was a consensus All American at Auburn. Three times all Southeastern Conference, but as you pointed out, Trump, the drawback was his size. He's about 6'1, 218, undersized for an NFL lineman until it's time to play. Second down and four. Second back is Biner, and he breaks the cross, and he's ahead for a first down. Driving the ball down to the 40 yard line of Pittsburgh. An eight yard gain on the play, and a first down for Cleveland. That's all Cleveland's interested in doing now. Just firing it right at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Lupe Sanchez that time on the tackle. Not a lot of yards, but it does look like very important yards rushing. And a very important game, not only for the Browns and the Steelers, but also for the Houston Oilers. They're watching in Houston getting set to now to go against your old team, the Cincinnati Bengals. We do not have playoff aspirations this year. No, they do not. Steeler win, and the Oilers are in position to win the division with a victory tonight. The Browns lead the game with 2.15 to play. Back to the run. Mack doesn't get much. Stays in bounds as those tough Steeler backers hunting the football, trying to free it. One turnover today, and that was the interception by Cornell Gowdy. It was run back for a Pittsburgh touchdown. Their offense, the Steelers, has not scored a touchdown. Steelers take a timeout with 2.05 remaining. Get another one when it goes to the two minute. This game is the property of the National Football League, the Cleveland Browns, and Pittsburgh Steelers, all rights are reserved. Three River Stadium, the day has warmed up at the outset, 32 degrees. Temperature has risen, wind coming up somewhat. There was no wind at the outset. 
Cleveland Browns exercised a lot of demons a year ago when they won here at Three Rivers Stadium for the first time in 17 tries. They were 0 for Three Rivers since this building opened in 1970. Yeah, they're not superstitious, but they did no, stay at, at the all. same hotel. Uh, they did. Uh, they did try to make everyone wear the same clothes. They did bring all of their injured reserve players, just as they did last year. Ernie Acorsi is wearing the same socks. We hope they're washed. Art Modell came over this morning. He has a very specific seating arrangement in his private box there. And they're hoping to exercise all these demons, but they're not superstitious at all. As we pointed out, Art Rooney, the patriarch of the Steelers, said he'd be a very happy man if Pittsburgh would someday score a touchdown. Field goals won't do it, and they haven't so far today. 19-13, lone Steeler touchdown by their defense as the Browns lead by six and on. Second down and eight. Hosar underthrows the ball. Nice coverage on the play by David Little, an inside linebacker from Florida, running stride for stride for the back, with the back out of the field. On the Cleveland Browns coming into this uh, drive, it gained 39 yards rushing. In this drive, 34 for a 73-yard total for the day. 15-0 are the Browns, and they've had 100 yards rushing as a team. Alcoa presents Fantastic Finishes, 1984. The Bears lead the Chargers 7-6 as Dan Fouts dumps a quickie off to Bobby Duckworth at the 50. Oh, he's quick, and he's on his way to the go-ahead touchdown. Hold it. He drops the ball, and Mike Richardson pounces on it. Duckworth is beside himself. Moments later, he and Fouts put together the longest TD pass play in Charger history, 88 yards into the end zone, and this time with the ball. Man, look at all these cans. They're worth a fortune. Joey, instead of recycling these cans for cash, I think we should donate them to a worthy cause. Donate? Hey, my. Well, hello, worthy cause. Hey, Joey, what about your cans? Well, I guess it's worthy cause time. Recycle. Aluminum beverage cans today. Aluminum food containers tomorrow. Save them for a worthy cause. Now it's time for the Most Valuable Player Award, sponsored by Budweiser. Today's MVP is Ozzie Newsom from the Cleveland Browns. Six receptions for 94 yards so far. Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of today's MVP. And I just noticed something. The clock now reached two minutes. When they took the timeout, there was 2.05. Let's find out if, in fact... Pittsburgh was charged with a timeout, or this is the two-minute warning? Because there was 2.05 on that clock. They ran the play, though, after it to take it down. I don't think so. I think there was 2.05 on the clock when the timeout was called. Completion, so that's All the right. Timeout at 205, then Kosar the incomplete pass. That brings it to the two-minute warning. Now very important down third down and almost nine for the Cleveland Browns. Showing blitz. The safety's coming hard. But he misses the tackle. The run is down to the 35-yard line, but there's a marker down also. Thomas Everett, the free safety for the Steelers. Number 27. Shot up the gap. This is on the defense. This flag is on the defense. Steelers down. Rod Woodson, number one draft choice. Watch this blitz. Car 91, Everett 27. We have tripping on the defense. Number 91 is a 10-yard oh, yeah. pick. Oh, yeah. It will be a first down. Big as life. It's a correct call. Sure is. That's an automatic first down. Unbelievable. There's no question that the call is correct. You don't see it called very often. But you can't trip to get a running back down, and Greg Carr did. Woodson hobbling off. First round draft pick in 1987. Watch once again. 91. Right there on the ground. 
Whips his leg up in the air. No question that that's a trip. That carries an automatic first down. Umpire standing right in there saw it all and fired the flag with 154 to play. Still 1913. The Cleveland Browns in the lead. They've never trailed today. The Browns report card for the day. Bernie Kosar with 21 of 35. 245 yards a touchdown. There was, of course, the pickoff and subsequent return. 43 yards for a touchdown by Cornell Gowdy of the Steelers. The Browns still well under 100 yards rushing. The bottom line is theirs right now. 19-13, they lead the game. First and 10 to the run they go. Second back through is Kevin Mack. Stays in, gets down to the 19-yard line. And Pittsburgh does have one timeout left. And they're not taking it. Now they take it. David Little finally signals to the official. We'll take our last timeout. 138 to play. Rounds use their last timeout. Fireman's Fund Insurance. Underwriter of movies and television, construction projects, property. The stakes are high. Every time you go into business, there's risk. Our business is learning to understand and handle that risk. We needed a partner to help us through that, and we found it in IBM. We got IBM together with our business people and captured the way our experts arrive at decisions, and that's what goes into the computer. Doing business with IBM minimizes our risk. IBM is our insurance policy. The best and brightest of the bowls are on NBC as the Pac-10 champion USC Trojans make their record 25th appearance to take on All-American Lorenzo White and the Big Ten champion Michigan State Spartans. It's the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. On New Year's Day, college football's best and brightest are on NBC. This is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy back at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, 1.38 to play. You see the Steeler report card. Malone, good percentage completions, but the two interceptions have been so costly. As the Browns now out of timeouts, run the ball on second down and three. They'll be lining up shortly if they don't make it on this try. Third and three for a most important field goal. They lead by six at the moment. And if it's not history now, it surely would be if Anderson hits it up and through to give them a nine-point lead. Bar. Or bar, rather. Uh, Cleveland's not going to be able to run the game out here. They're going to have to make some decisions as to exactly what they're going to do. There's still going to be some time on the clock. Unless they pick up the first down, which it's now third down and three. Five seconds on the 32nd clock. And on the Ernest Biner runs the ball and down to the 16 yard line. Trump. There's still going to be a few ticks on the clock. Another time of possession for the Browns. And the Steelers is seven points. It's amazing, huh? On the uh, interception return. What are the Browns going to do here? Looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. Our producer for today's game, Glenn Adamo. Director, Ted Nathanson. Associate director, Doug Grabert. Tomorrow, NFL Live at 12.30 Eastern time as the strike-shortened season comes to its 15th and final regular season week. Keith Gary is down at the moment for the Pittsburgh Steelers being attended to. The Cleveland Browns, 24 seconds from going back to Cleveland as divisional champion for a third straight year. And with that championship, they'd have next week off, and they would be on home field for the first round of the playoffs. They're jumping up and down on the sidelines, and with reason is... You see the breakdown of tomorrow's games. Bills go against the Eagles at Philadelphia. Jets and Giants in New Jersey. Cincinnati at Houston, a very important game for the Oilers. I think Minifield, Dixon, and uh, Felix Wright are jumping up and down because they may have to go back on the football field. There's 24 seconds left, and it's fourth down, and if the Browns don't get it and the clock stops to change of possession, I think they're trying to get warm up, warmed up because they know they're going to. They, there may be one more play. Time permitting, we'll be joining Bob Castus, Ahmad Rashad, and Paul McGuire for NFL Live immediately following the game. As 24 seconds remain, our thanks to NBC's chief statistician Joe Costanza, to spotters Tim Fogarty and Mike McGinley, helping in the booth with Joe Costanza and company, George Jordan and John Rooney. 
And to 24 seconds to play, so the streak is officially over twice now. The losing streak at Pittsburgh. Browns a victor here a year ago to end the 0 for Three Rivers streak. 0 and 16. Now they've been got a win streak. 2 and 0. That, so it, this is that, it. That injury. The are out of timeouts. That injury cost Pittsburgh a chance. Keith Gary on the sideline. Cleveland does not have to run another play. That is good fortune. They have had their breaks today, haven't they? Now they played well too. And they do when they have to. One of the real good teams in the NFL and one to be watched in the playoffs. The Cleveland Browns is our MVP. Ozzie Newsom goes up. Chuck Knoll, a native Clevelander and a former Brown player on two championship teams there. Coming across to shake hands as the Browns dominated the fourth period in time of possession 14 39 to 21 seconds. They had the ball almost the whole quarter. Time. Absolutely. That last drive was like 14 plays. We'll be back with Bob Costas and the NFL Live postgame show in a moment. Final numbers at Pittsburgh, Cleveland 19, Steelers 13.